striking like lightning again. Here's Clash of Clans, the World Championship, back with the July qualifiers. The second day, another four teams that fight for the last two remaining spots to play off Sunday. My name is once again Renee, bringing you all the action of Clash of Clans and the best teams from around the globe. With me, once again, Woody and Carpenter. Thank you, Renee. It's great to be back for day number two, and we're going to be seeing Group B in action. Which one's going to be joining the two clans for the playoffs? We'll find out soon. Howdy, y'all. Thanks so much for coming back. Hope that you are energized and ready for today. We've got some returning favorites and some new clans that you might not have seen before. So please join us for the World Championship July Qualifier. Besides, obviously, playoff slots, there's another thing that's going on here, and that is the golden ticket. The ticket the teams want to get to ESL 1, the big Clash of Clans World Championship final in Hamburg in a stadium. That will be a great atmosphere for everyone to watch and experience. So if you want to be there, just follow the link in the description, buy your ticket for ESL 1 Hamburg, and celebrate with us the biggest of Clash of Clans competitive gaming. So, all right, with that out of the way, I think we're all ready to dive into Group B after we uh, yeah, finished group by yesterday. We have our two teams, MCS and INTZ, joining us for the playoffs. Yes, MCS getting 35. It was unbelievable seeing all the triples coming in, and then INTZ joined them as well. And not too far behind then. Today in Group B, we have another four teams competing. The team that gets the most stars will be first seed, and the team that gets the second most stars will be second seed. We have Proc, Blaze JP, Nova, and the Dark Looters. That will be another big, big group. You see, like, Every qualifier in here has teams where you think like, oh, they could all make it, right? We can't really narrow it down, nail it down to the one team that should do it. Here's the schedule, obviously, for you guys for today. We start with Blaze JP versus uh, Proc, then we see Nova versus Proc, and then in round three, we see all of the matches for the last round, because that's mostly the, the best one, right? Because it, it takes till the end till we find out who's going through to play up a Sunday. To kick off match number one, we obviously need team number one. And that's another returning clan, just as Woody said already, here's Brock. Hi, um, I'm Bradis, so I'm the leader of Proc. Um, we've got Tom, Jon, and Vince, we're co in the clan. Well, in this qualifier, there's, there's a lot of um, professional teams in this one, so they're all gonna be difficult to beat. Uh, but we're going to put up some triples, hopefully, and get through to the final. We're not worried about any team. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time we've been in a qualifier, but we're very grateful to be back. Um, we feel very lucky to be back. Um, and we're hoping that we learn from last time, take it forward, and hopefully do a little bit better. The thing that drives us about this competition is bringing more competitiveness to our clan and to the game. It really inspired us to really get to that next level. And seeing a lot of the other pro teams out there, it sets a goal for us. We'd have definitely quit if we'd stopped playing competitively. Yeah, we've spent more time preparing for this one because we know a little bit about what to expect. They're inspired by competitive clashing, and now it's their chance to inspire other people live here on stage. We're kicking it off with Blaze JP, Emikun, Mojikun, Wan, Oshikun, and Yukun. Brock has brought Bratters, Jan, I am Vince Post, Godblin, and Tom. We know how important it is to have a good start in today, one, but it's also about who's the first one to get into a good rhythm. We saw that yesterday. Some of the players kind of shaking on their pad. We saw that on their hands, getting nervous and all that. So it will be important to get in the zone, get ready for clashing and Clash of Clans World Championship. Round number one is ready. Here we go. Blaze JP versus Proc. Blaze JP and Proc going at it. They've both been here before returning. Excited to see what they're going to be kicking it off with the first match. Always the most nerve-wracking, and Blaze JP is going to be kicking off here today. Blaze JP is a Japanese clan that came in sixth place in the in-game Clan War League rankings. On the other side, Proc has got members from around the globe, but primarily English-speaking from America and the United States. They were also here in May and qualified today through the ESL Play online tournament. We're kicking it off with the Mass Hogs and Skellies, the two skeleton spells we've been seeing a lot in the first day with Group A, and we're seeing it again here today in Group B, sending the King on the outside, finds some Teslas, finds a Giant Bomb, hopefully Queen can step up, but there is the enemy King, 
and he does activate that Town Hall, which is going to be raining down on the Queen, and the Wall Breakers didn't get into to let the Queen in, but she wouldn't even be able to get to the Town Hall anyways because it was firing on top of her. Ashikun says that he excels in freestyle play. He's comfortable attacking any type of base and will build whatever army he needs to take it down. He did say that if Pekka is his favorite troop, but he's bought the Hog Riders today, just like you noted there, Carbon Finn. He said he's the leader uh, of cheers for his team, so he really helps to get the hype up for Blaze JP. It'll be important for him to start things off on a strong note here. And so he sent in the Grand Warden with a new Party Warden skin, rocking out to take that Town Hall down right quick and early. And he could target that Town Hall right away because it was activated, so he didn't have to worry about having the 51% or something damaging it. Now the Grand Warden is moving around, but you guys probably see that is the new Grand Warden skin, which you guys will be able to get in the next month. And he's dropping the Skellies on the enemy Queen, taking her down, but the Baby Dragon is now on top of the Warden. Did just get the two stars right there, so he at least secured that. Now he's trying to get percentage just passing 56, unfortunately, he really wanted to create that funnel by taking the Town Hall down and moving through the base with the Hogs and Stone Slammer somewhere else. Yeah, pretty surprising he actually missed the Grand Warden ability on those Hog Riders as they were attacking the Town Hall. Instead, he used the Grand Warden ability when he was out on his own fighting the Clan Castle troops. Didn't get the poison down as he might have hoped, and so the Witches surviving uh, meant that this raid was going to end a bit premature. He's going to try to snap a few more buildings along the outside edge, but with that Eagle Artillery still standing it's going to fire away just as soon as those cc troops get there looks like we'll have a 65 percent two star from all she lukun of blaze jp i am fence post looking to run a different cc which we've been typically seeing the lava hound he had the baby dragon and two witches and there's the giant bomb and he doesn't pop this grand ward internal tome he did end up freezing the town hall but like you noted, Woody, there is the Hogs moving through. They get hit by that Giga Bomb, which does a thousand damage to anything in its radius. Ground or air, it doesn't matter. The only thing it won't damage is the Miners, because they go underneath it. Flat-footed on their first strike, Blaze JP will go home with a two-star, 65% hit to start things off with. Proc has a great chance to turn things around. Goblin is up to attack now. He's a YouTuber, and he is... Uh, active posting videos over there. So if you like this attack, make sure to go check out the strategies that he shares on his own channel. Goblin says that he loves playing with goblins, but he didn't bring any to this attack today. He says that his team is a really cool bunch of guys and he gets a lot of practice playing Clash of Clans, even sometimes at work. We won't tell his boss though if you won't. No, don't do that indeed, because a lot of people probably have the phones as well to try to get their attacks in. But he's in this attack here for war. The king's moving to the top side. Queen's gonna help create a little bit of a funnel so that the Stone Slammer and E-Dragons can come into here to take out this enemy queen because take note, there's no sweeper pointed to the top side. So the Stone Slammer and some E-Dragons have a free shot right to the queen and the eagle. And the town hall is touching, or actually, yeah, the clan castle's touching the town hall. The E-Dragons aren't going necessarily right to the queen. He drops the clone over the queen. He's need to get the queen and this eagle down. This is a really interesting strategy from Godlin here. Typically we see two, maybe even three Lava Hounds to support these balloons, but instead he's chosen to bring that Stone Slammer and the Electro Dragons to get the damage done over on the right side of this map. His key targets for this Lava Loon hit are definitely going to be those air defenses. You can see one really centrally located, so this could be a tough sell. Godlin here about to go for the Town Hall. It is activated now. The balloons get the drop, and that's going to be the second star claim for this attack. He's moving past the Baby Dragon in the Poison Spell, and the Balloons under that Grand Warden Internal Tome. It does last for seven seconds now at level 40 for the maxed out Grand Warden. Doesn't have any more uh, spells. He does have five Balloons, and take a look at the Lava Hound that's at the bottom of your screen just hovering there. If he drops any of these Archers, it's gonna move to wherever the Archer is. Drops the Baby Dragon on the bottom side. Is he gonna have enough Balloons to move through this Inferno Tower, but that air defense and that Expo was just firing down these balloons. Now he's looking to get some more percent because Blaze JP did get a 65% in their first hit, so he's past that mark. So Proc is in the lead right now with the percentage. I've been made a very aggressive play early on here, dropping almost all of his haste spells in those top left compartments. That meant that all of the defensive structures went down there as the balloons had no trouble. Uh, leapfrogging from one defense to the other, but as things ran on in this attack, he kind of ran out of steam, still had to face down a multi-target Inferno and Expo, and air defense on the backside, and he 
just didn't have enough juice to take it down. Upside to this attack, though, is that because he used the spells really aggressively early on, he did get quite a few of these buildings taken out. You can see him now surpassing that 80% overall damage threshold. That's going to be a little bit above average uh, based upon the attacks that we saw yesterday and should put Proc in a comfortable position now ahead in percentage relative to Blaze JP. Just trying to grab the final percent with these minions. Not going to end out of the raid because it comes down to percent if it is a tie on stars. We go stars, then percent. This minion's going to finally get picked off with eight seconds. There we go. Going to finally get it to 86. There is 86 right there. Still a great attack, or actually 85. And he can't get that final building down, so still a really good hit for Proc. That's right. All right, we'll be going back to Blaze JP next. It'll be their turn to return fire, but we'll take one quick look at the replay and watch that Town Hall going down. Three spell uh, stops that Giga Tesla in its tracks and gives those balloons the opportunity to get the drop there right before that tornado trap goes off. Could have been really bad for Goblin if that tornado trap had pulled the balloons back before they killed the Town Hall because with that baby dragon burping fire on them and the Giga Tesla firing off, that would have been a lot of damage in a very short amount of time, but got a great break there and things turned out very well uh, in the first attack for Proc. Now Blaze JP is going to be kicking off with a Queen Charge Miners. We didn't see too many of these yesterday. And as we noted before, the Miners, if they go under the Town Hall, they won't get affected by the Giga Bomb. So he's going to try to use that to his advantage. The Miner finds a Troll Tesla over on the left side. Nine o'clock, Queen's at the top. He's going to reach over the wall, grab this Wizard Tower, and he doesn't have any wall breakers, which means he's going to use the Siege Machine, the Wall Wrecker, to charge in, which it goes directly to the Town Hall, and it takes three shots on the maxed out level 13 wall to get through it. Imon Kun, a Japanese player, said that he is going to spend all his prize money going to the best ramen shops in Japan if he wins. My personal recommendation would be to go check out Ichiban if you get a chance to go there. But we'll see if he may manage just to get to the playoffs first. He's going to have to do it with Miners and a P.E.K.K.A. to support this push. He's going from the opposite side of the town hall, so a bit of a risky strategy here. If things don't play out the way that he expects, he might have difficulty tearing down that key target to get the first star in this raid. The Queen's going to work through this Dragon. It was a beautiful CC with a Queen charge because the Queen can fight through this with a Poison and no problem. If it is a Lava Hound, typically the Queen will not only have to get through the high HP of the Lava Hound, but also have to get through the Pups that get exploded. And now he has to worry about these Ice Golems stealing the healers. So that's one of the problems if we drop some ground units out of the Wall Wrecker. The Queen might lose the healers and she could go down since he already used the Queen ability. She can't reach those Expos there, grabs the cannon, and he's going to try to set a funnel and use the Miners in between the heroes, meaning he still has to drop the King, and the Miners should be going in between. Yeah, it did look like Imon Kun's attackers lost one of the healers, about to lose the second, but barely managed to keep her up. The rest of them are going down now to this air defense, and uh, without an Archer Queen, it seems like stage one of this attack is over. Stage two is going to start now from the bottom right side, so he will get uh, to focus directly onto that Town Hall. The nice part about this early uh, stab from Imun Kun's attack was that he was able to take out the Clan Castle troops and the Eagle Artillery. Those are two really key defenses that you've got to make sure you deal with nice and early. Uh, also looks like the enemy Archer Queen is down, so that's another uh, little feather in Imun Kun's hat for this attack. There is only 45 seconds left in this raid. He's being patient, but he still has to get this Town Hall down. Good thing that the, since these Expos were pretty far away, the Queen was, in, was not able to reach them. And now the Miners are going straight in for the Town Hall because he knows he needs to percent. There is the Grand Warden. Drops the first heal. The Scalies are going to distract the Miners a bit. But he's got to get the Town Hall down. He's got 24 seconds. The King's going in. Already popped his ability. Popped the Grand Warden Eternal Tome. That Town Hall is not being oh. targeted. Uh-oh, we're going to have a possible first one star of not just today, but the whole tournament so far. Yeah, the Barbarian King pulled the Miners away from that Town Hall. Now, hold on, it is taking a little bit of fire here, I think, from the Grand Warden, maybe. But that's not going to be enough to take the Town Hall down. This is actually not just the first one star today, but the first one star in the July qualifier. A bad follow-up from Blaze JP definitely puts them on their back heels now, as Proc will have a chance to gain the lead with just a two-star strike. Oh, that's so unfortunate because that king pulled all the miners from the town hall. I was wondering where the king was going to come down, but he didn't necessarily set the funnel properly for these miners to even make it to this town hall. And he waited so long, and those miners still went all the way up to the top side of the base. All right, next up is going to be Tom from Proc. 
Tom said that hog riders are his favorite troops. He really enjoys playing with Proc because he says that it's the best group of friends he could find in the whole Clash of Clans universe. He says it's a true honor to be here back for the second time returning after the Mary qualifier. Uh, Tom is a 34-year-old retail manager from the United States and said that if he manages to get a big prize here, he's going to buy his knife a wife, buy his wife a nice present to thank her for letting him come here to the event today. Well, since he's had the experience before, maybe that's playing a factor in his army composition. He's going in with the P.E.K.K.A. Smash, five healers, four P.E.K.K.A.s. He's got two jumps. He's going to try to make his way in. He's using a Coco Loon. If you are unaware, it's to test for some Seeking Air Mines so that you don't lose your healer potentially, and you can save that healer and keep the Queen alive deeper into the raid. So the Queen's going to step up and reach over the wall, grab this Wizard Tower. She cannot reach the Town Hall, so it's, it's too far away. But now it looks like she's going to walk up and around this base. And where is he going to send the P.E.K.K.A.s, the Bowlers, and charge into this base here? He has to be able to get this Town Hall down to make sure he gets that two-star, because we saw in the previous attack, which was a one from Blaze JP. That's right, and even though Blaze JP scored a one star, remember this entire war is going to come down to which team gets the most stars overall. Croc might be happy that their defense is held up, but they have really got to make sure that they keep the pressure on their opponents as well. Every attack needs to be at least a two star, maybe even a three star if they want to have a solid chance at qualifying. Yesterday we saw 32 stars was the minimum to move on to the playoffs. Yeah, now the Queen and the Bowlers, everything's moving in, but the Queen kind of got stuck up by the Clan Castle. The Dragon and Archers came out. We're not seeing some Lava Hounds. It's pretty, not as much here, but he still has that Stone Slammer saving it for the Town Hall. If the Queen reaches over the wall, grabs that Sweeper, should help that Stone Slammer not to be pushed back. And now he drops one Balloon, which is going to move his way to this Town Hall to try to test for any Seeking Air Mines. And it does actually find two of them, but wow. the one Sam is going to fly over to the Stone Slammer. Stone Slammer is going to get drawn in by that Tornado Trap, but not too much to worry there. Tom still is pretty confident that the Town Hall will go down. That should be an easy two-star clear for the proc players here. They are taking their time, but they are making it all the way through this base. Pretty much all of the defenses on the internal compartments have been taken out, except for that very bottom compartment, but it is a doozy, Carbon Fin. We still have a multi-target Inferno, an air defense, and a cannon down there. A few defense buildings along the outside of this base could make cleanup difficult for him. Yeah, we saw the Tornado Trap near the Town Hall, which means it slowed that Stone Slammer down quite a bit. It does take four drops from the Stone Slammer to take the Town Hall down, but if it's spinning around taking damage from the Town Hall and, and, and some other defenses, then it won't be able to take it down in time. And the Balloons came out and he lost every single one of them to the Giga Bomb. And he still has a couple bowlers, which he was doing a nice bowler bounces there. Still up in the 87%. The first attack from Croc was actually an 85, so that's actually better than the first. Trying to get into the 90s. The, the minion looks to be going down on the top side. Still has some P.E.K.K.A.s, 92%. Trying to get to 93, maybe going to get to 94 with a couple more swings. He could get to 95, and the P.E.K.K.A.s, it oh, up, there it is. But we're not going to get to 100 for the three star. They're going to get stuck on that wall. But still a great hit from Tom. No, Tom delivering right. with 95 percent here, especially with Omon Kun only having a one star on the side of Blaze JP. Now after two attacks, each side's proc in some kind of elite building process right now. That's looking good. Absolutely. Pegasus Smash works really well with these jump spells, and Tom got great placement there enabling most of the Pekkas and Bowlers to be able to jump into the central compartments of this base, crashing down on that Eagle Artillery as quickly as they can is really important, especially with so many clumped up uh, troops on the attack. I wonder how Blaze JP is going to answer that one star that they just got, which was using the Queen Charge Miners in the previous hit for Blaze JP. Proc still doesn't have a triple of their own, and now he's coming in with a Queen Charge Kind of hogs, but it's actually kind of a hybrid. It's got three healers, 24 hogs, and six bowlers. More of a kill squad into the hog riders using the Grand Warden to set the funnel on the outside since it has a, such a large radius. Drops the balloon to test for seeking air mines and then the baby dragon to help set the funnel. And he's going to send everything not to, only to the town hall, but to try to jump into the queen. That's right, Carbon Finn. It's a bit of a risky play dropping this Grand Warden early on. If you don't have the timing down just right, you need to make sure that he supports the main force of the attack. But the fact that he's able to have such a long range and jump over walls uh, means that he should be able to get a free few structures out here along the edge. 
Yukun said that he is a hog expert, but he says that the greatest thing about his team is that they adjust so well in the middle of wars, depending upon what the situation is like. They really need to adjust strongly here and orient themselves toward three-star hits, given that they got a one-star in the previous attack. He said that his goal is to prove that he can climb any mountain here, and at the Clash of Clans World Championship, he's got a mighty hill to climb if he wants to be proc. But unfortunately, that Grand Warden goes down, and he didn't even get the ability off. We heard Proc looking at that, and now he's going to try to jump in. So he didn't have the Grand Warden Eternal Tome for over the Gigabomb. And out comes a dragon from the Clan Castle, and he's not going to get the same value that he wanted. Pops the Queen ability, still has 24 Hog Riders, 3 heal spells. But unfortunately, the enemy Queen looks to be staying up and not going to be able to take her down. This is a very fancy attack that you can set up. It takes everything to go right in order to get the maximum value from these sorts of hits. When things uh, don't go the way you planned, if you find a few traps in a place you didn't expect, if you get the timing just off a little bit with that Grand Warden and lose him early on, it can definitely uh, be a huge detractor from this raid. And as you can see here, uh, overall damage is now at 52% and doesn't seem to be climbing very much higher than that. A couple of troops left in Yukun's arsenal, uh, but it looks like the bulk of this base is still standing. Eagle Artillery, Archer Queen still in the middle there, firing away. Uh, what do you think was the, the, the key uh, slip up here from Yukon's attack, Carmen? The biggest thing in this attack was losing that Grand Warden. He didn't follow into the main push of this army, so he couldn't use the Grand Warden internal tome over the Giga Bomb, and he pretty much lost everything there except anything that had, had higher HP, which was the King, the Queen, and any Pekkas that were trying to push their way through, and all the bowlers were gone. And he's going to be ending at about a 63. Can he just get a little bit more percentage? But unfortunately, with that one star, that wasn't looking good for Blaze JP. Another follow-up performance there from Blaze JP did manage to get uh, the two stars, so they're trying to stay on track here. They're going to need a big turnaround later on and definitely want to avoid those big mistakes like letting the Grand Warden water in like that. You saw him going down to the enemy Grand Warden and Cannon and Tesla uh, combination over there on the left side of the base. Still, Yukun was able to adjust on the fly and pull off the two-star hit there keeping them in the game. Let's take a look at the entire Group B standings right now. We can see the Dark Looters and Nova match have actually ended in a 12-12 draw. Dark Looters getting the edge on destruction percentage overall. Yeah, Dark Looters coming away with the percentage. We had Vale and Sir Iron with the two three stars for Dark Looters. And we had the two three stars, LP and Way of Nova. Next up, we're going back to Proc, where it looks like Yawn is going to be the next to strike. He's got Veni, Vidi, Vici tattooed on his arm, so expect him to conquer all that he sees. Yon said that he really loves playing with bowlers, uh, but it looks like this time he's going with an Electro Drag to start the funnel before moving into the Hog Riders afterwards. He's brought two Poison Spells and a Skeleton Spell. Expect to see those dropped near the center left side of the space where that Clan Castle and enemy Archer Queen are. They are crucial targets to take down in order for these Hog Riders to work out. Since they target defensive buildings, uh, they really need to make sure that any enemy troops on defense don't get the best of them. He's dropping the wall breakers in here to try to open up the wall so the Queen can help get this Town Hall. But he does have two poisons, which potentially can help take down a defending dragon. You, two poisons by themselves will take the dragon out, but if he has anything else there, he can use the one poison for the CC and potential skellies if they move around. Hopefully this gold storage doesn't pull the queen down. If it does, she might not go into the town hall. Hopefully she does. Otherwise, the dark storage will be her next. No, she does go into the town hall. There he goes. Pops the queen ability, and now he can continue with the rest of this raid. Flawless timing from Yon in this first strike. Taking down the town hall early is a big sigh of relief for any attacker. It means that all you have to focus on now is destroying as many buildings as you possibly can. He's moving in with the stone slammer next to get a few easy shots at the bottom right compartment over here, taking out a multi-target inferno in the process. Expect to maybe see him follow up over on the left side. Yep, he's got a take out those other two multi-target infernos and the eagle artillery and the cc and the archer queen uh, in this next hit now comes the baby dragon and lava hound out of the clan castle some hogs split off to the right there find a giant bomb he drops the rage but the hogs are under the ability drops another heal but there's no hogs there except one over the eagle the skellies help take out the enemy queen the baby dragon is now down in the poison he lost a handful of hogs going down to the south side, and now the hogs up top are getting healed back up. He has two wizards, a couple minions for cleanup, but he doesn't need the second poison. He drops it on some skellies. You don't know if unless they 
could have had a dragon. That's why a lot of times you're looking at the other attacks and see what they have in the CCs. Maybe they have the same CCs, but this time they put a lava and a baby dragon, which wasn't a regular dragon. Certainly want to see a bit of a light spread with these hog riders so that they can target multiple defensive buildings at once, but a spread that severe is not going to help out at all. That Tesla popping up unexpected meant that Jan couldn't keep his troops together. It looks like even this Grand Warden kind of decided that he's going to help out the uh, skeletons that spawn instead of following the hog riders around this base. When you look at the base, though, Jan did a great job at taking out almost all of the defenses. Really, the only things that could threaten a hog rider at this point uh, are those three in the center, the Expo Bomb Tower, Wizard Tower. Uh, those point defenses along the bottom right side of the base wouldn't be too tough for them to take out, but they just had some unlucky hits running into three big uh, giant bombs over on the kind of bottom center section of the base. Jan coming away with a two-star 80% will keep his team ahead. Yeah, definitely the 80% helped them so far. No attack below that 85, 95 and 80 for the side of Proc. And Blightship, he obviously still with a disadvantage of that one star early on. We're taking a look at the uh, deployment of the Hog Riders and we're looking at the Hogs that did go to the Archer Tower in a round and unfortunately couldn't be saved in the Grand Warden and Eternal Tome. Did take out the Queen nicely with the Poison and Skellies, but the Hogs unfortunately did not group up as they were moving to the base. Return fire from Blaze JP. It's going to be Mochi Kun coming up next. He said that dragons are his favorite troops, and maybe we can return to the skies with this next attack. He said that the best part about playing with Blaze JP is that they are all very strong players. They adapt well, and they know that since they are behind right now, they've got to really turn up the heat the pressure on this proc team to make it through. He's an honor student right now, a 21-year-old, and said that he's going to try to save his prize winnings for future use if he does come away with something big at the World Finals. That would definitely be very smart. Now, he's very smart with using the Queen Charge Lalo go into the air. Queen is going to be able to help remove the air defense, drops the freeze and some wall breakers. Hopefully they don't get hit by that expo, and they get it off to open the wall. Just perfect timing. That was pretty risky there, but he knew what he was doing, taking out this multi, and he's gonna be stepping up, grabbing this expo, and he's dropping another set of wall breakers. Can he time it? He does through the mortar shots, opens it up to get to the eagle compartment, and now that's open. Beautiful job. Now he's gonna have to get through this lava hound. Once that eagle goes down, he can start the Lalo, but that queen is on the outside side. Fantastic finesse from Mochi-kun. It looks like he got a great pull on the clan castle as well. Did lose one of his healers to a Seeking Air Mine there. I'm not quite sure if he got the entire CC pulled. Uh, looks like a few skeletons are going to luckily for Mochi-kun pop up right into that poison trap. Uh, they should go down to one shot each from the Archer Queen who will continue her charge into the center. Needs to take out the enemy Eagle Artillery and that's her next target, Carbon Fin. It looks like this Lava Loon attack is going to be coming in from the left side. What do you think are the key targets that still remain here? I still see an Archer Queen, Multi-Target Inferno and Air Defense in the bottom. Well, the biggest thing is that enemy Queen. So where this Queen goes, if she goes to the top down to maybe the wall and he's flying actually from the top side because if we take a look at the sweepers, they're pointing to nine and six. So we're going to try to fly right behind the sweepers and the stone slammers coming up towards this town hall. And then the town hall is actually not activated, which is perfect. It only activates at 51%, or if it takes damage, the Grand Warden is now flying in. He's approaching 51, 48, so close. Hopefully he doesn't activate it too quickly here. Grand Warden, get in the range. Where is this Warden going? He's completely leave it, lose, losing the topside balloons. They're under rage. Can they take the town hall down? It's barely hanging oh. on there. Oh, it goes oh. down with the death of the balloon. The death damage coming in clutch from Mochi-kun to get the second start here. Grand Warden decided he's going to help out that Archer Queen a little bit, and I think that she definitely needed it. Getting a little bit low on health now. She only has a few healers to keep her up, and she's taking a lot of damage. But meanwhile, these balloons have done their job, and it looks like Mochi-kun might be on his way to three stars. The only difficulty he's facing now is the timer. 30 seconds left, and not too many troops for cleanup here, Carbon Finn. Not too many troops. He's at 24 seconds, and he's got a lot of the base remaining, including that clan castle in the middle, but that one's almost down. And there is the enemy king, full health, protecting his little altar right there. So they're going to have to waste all the shots on the king, and it looks like he's going to fall up short just because of time. But getting that town hall down with the death of the balloon, he might have just gotten away with that. But hey, it's still a 91% two-star, still the best hit so far for Blaze JP. He'll wear the queen's crown today, the best queen charge we've seen uh, from either side. 
but started uh, a bit late on the second stage of this attack. Those balloons losing out on the Grand Warden that they needed to stay up. Uh, managed to get that Town Hall, and thank goodness for it, Blaze JP certainly needed that additional star, but the cleanup was just a little bit too far spread out for him to be able to pull off the three-star victory. Now we're having Bradders of Croc gonna be looking to come in and try to get the first triple, and we're seeing a Queen Walk E-Drag attack. And if you're wondering what's the difference between a Queen Walk and a potential Queen Charge, well, the Queen Walk is just going to walk around the base and not charge into the core, while the Charge will go for specific objectives, including the Eagle, the enemy Queen, and try to take out the inside of the base. Bradders is an MRI researcher from the United Kingdom. He is the leader of PROC. He said it's a dream come true to return here to the arena. He really wants to improve upon his performance from last time. And his superpower? He can function really well on even just two hours of sleep. Might come in handy if he had any jet lag from the travel here. Absolutely can come in handy, but now he's trying to take out the enemy queen. He does. Edrex makes easy work of that. Now his queen is going around, but she's going through the wall. Oh, she now gets off of it. Edrex is working on the town hall. Grand Warden pops his eternal tome, and the town hall just goes down, doesn't have any more spells, unfortunately. Finds a tornado trap, and this queen is walking around. The Edrex has to take out the left side multi. He does. So now the queen can actually walk all the way around this base, but he still has that inner multi. How is the queen going to be able to handle this? She's got a lot to deal with in this left side compartment, but fortunately not too many more air defenses uh, firing away at her. Just the one that's relatively centralized and the one on the far right side still without any additional support troops here. We're just trying to count up the percentage damage here. Uh, the Grand Warden doing a fine job collecting a few more buildings along the right side as the queen moves in the left. She still has her Royal Cloak ability, so expect Ratters to be able to get north of that 80% uh, mark, but I don't think that the three stars can be possible, especially with such a well-protected Inferno Tower still inside the base. Even though the Queen still has her Royal Cloak, he's going to try to time it perfectly. Usually what you're going to see is the pros popping that Queen ability just at the last possible second. Usually the King ability is towards the middle of his health, and the Queen is at the last second, so you can try to get as much use before being forced to pop it. He still has a minute four, so you're not going to see him hit that until it's absolutely necessary. He definitely wants to keep those healers on their task and get as much value as he can out of their uh, healing ability there. So when he uses that Royal Cloak ability, it means that he does fear that his queen is about to go down. And it looks like, just like you said, Carmen Finney's going to use it just as that queen wanted it's within the Inferno Tower range. But even though it's set to multi-target, it can still dish out a ton of damage. Focusing primarily on the healers will be uh, its job right now because there's still a few point defenses left. We don't want to call it too soon. I definitely said that uh, it was looking a bit short here. That Archer Queen going down no, though at 97%. Another strong attack by Proc. And with that, Blaze Ship is left with only one solution to this war, and that is a triple in the last attack. They're going to need that. We're seeing the scoreboard with the 12 stars in the war backstage. But this is Bredos coming in with that Queen Walk E Dragons. And unfortunately, the E-Dragons didn't get that bottom side multi, which then started hitting the healers as the Queen walked all the way around. Still a really good hit, just ran out of time there and then took out the enemy Queen. Juan, the sole Spaniard from Blaze JP, is attacking next. He says Loon's Queen Walk is his favorite strategy. He appreciates the discipline shown by his teammates and believes that he will be rewarded for his efforts here at the Clash of Clans World Championship July Qualifier. Remember, if you want to watch more of this action going on, we've got another month uh, in August leading up until the ESL1 World Championship uh, in Hamburg. You can buy tickets for that online if you're interested in seeing the Clash in action live in October. That's going to be amazing, the ESL1. I cannot wait for that. But unfortunately, in here, the Queen doesn't go to this multi, gets pulled by the Dragon, this Valkyrie. And that multi-target Inferno is going to stay up and potentially, but he does actually try to save it, uses some balloons to send in to try to take it down. He does beautiful adjustment there, but he pulls some more of the archers, and the queen is walking back around to the air skellies over there. Where is this queen going? I can't even figure this out. Going to take out the archers, and she goes back into the base. Oh, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable, but not necessarily a bad result for Juan here. He got a few of those buildings along the interior of the base, and now it's going to have his queen move back toward the bottom section where he wanted her to go in the first place.
targeting onto the enemy Eagle artillery now and should soon go after the enemy Archer Queen and perhaps even that multi-target Inferno afterwards. This is incredible that he was able to help to get the Queen back into the, the core of the space and not only take out the enemy Queen, but also take out that Eagle. Now he can fly casually around the base, doesn't have to worry. He's going to target right near the Town Hall. The Grand Warren's flying in. That's that Town Hall will activate the moment it takes some damage, or 51%. It's now active. The Queen goes oh. down on the left there, but he's still going to be able to try to fly through this Town Hall. Still has that Grand Warren ability, and he'll use it right as the balloons are flying over the Giga Bomb. Great timing there ensures that they remain protected as they move through the bottom side of the space. Key defenses still left are a multi-target Inferno and air defense and a ring of three Wizard Towers, which are going to deal a lot of splash damage to these balloons, unfortunately, for one. Drops the haste, gets the balloons moving, but there are quite a bit of splash buildings left, including the Wizard Towers and that multi, and the air defense will just slowly pick these balloons off just passing 70%, pulling some more air skellies. But unfortunately, that queen couldn't stay up and she would have been able to help clear the whole backside here. Unfortunately, she cannot do that. And these balloons are about to go down, finishing at about 77, tries to get a little bit more percentage, but that's gonna be the last attack right there for top of for actually Blaze JP. Two Japanese clans represented here. Unfortunately, Top of Japan, widely expected uh, to have moved on, was in third place last night. So Blaze JP is the sole remaining Japanese clan, the pride uh, of that nation, doing their best to move on. They'll get another two-star strike here, an opportunity to move back and uh, make another attempt at three stars later on today as they have two more wars, but it looks like Proc uh, has got this war in the bag. All they need to do is put another two-star up and they'll take away the win. Yes, it's just going to be an 84% two-star for Juan right there. Going to fall short of the three, and we have one final attack for Proc. It's going to be I am Fem Fence Post, but you can see in here, the Grand Warden flying over this Town Hall, but the Queen could not stay up that Ground Expo just firing down on her. And if that was an Air Expo, it would not have been able to reach the Queen, and she potentially could have been able to stay up. So a lot of times you might see the ground expos for queen charges like that. Last but not least, from Proc is I Am Fence Post, a Dragon Master, and he's brought two Electro Dragons to this raid. He said that since 2012, he's been playing this game for almost seven years, folks. Since 2012, he's dreamed of being a top player, and that effort has finally now paid off in bringing him here today to the Clash of Clans World Championship Qualifier. Proc in the lead against Blaze JP right now. Gives I Am Fence Post an excellent opportunity to finish things off strong for his clan. He's brought two Lava Hounds and 26 Balloons, the La Loon combination to get the job done. He's gonna try to send these E-Dragons right into this Eagle Artillery and that Stone Slammer so that he can take out the enemy queen and clear the section. We are seeing a single target Inferno in the core, which I don't think I've actually seen too much, or they've pretty much all been multis. Drops the raid for the E-Dragon in the core because there's no sweeper that's gonna push them back. But the E-Dragons look to be going around the bottom side and not getting pulled into the enemy queen there. And now the Sweeper is going to push them through, and that single target Inferno can lock onto these E-Drags and take them down super quick. Brock does have a commanding overall destruction lead against Blaze JP, so all they really need to do here is get that one star, and they will have secured victory in this round. But remember, moving on to the playoffs, where we only have two spots, requires being uh, in the top two by star count overall. Nova and Dark Looters, each with 12 stars, performed very well in their first war, and Proc and Blaze JP are going to have to catch up. Interesting to note that there's a single target Inferno in the center of the base there, Carbon Fin. What do you think uh, was going through Emokun's mind when he chose that? Potentially for a queen charge, but now I am Fence Post is trying to save and get this two star. That single target Inferno is not going to be able to do too much to these pack of balloons since they can only target one troop at a time. Flying in, he did secure that two star, so that's looking good. Unfortunately, we don't we didn't see a single three today here in the live war. But hey, we don't know. You still gotta at least get those two stars to help try to advance and get the percentage as well. The, e the eagle artillery is firing down right there, 70%, trying to get the last percentage here for Proc. And he still has the one minion. Hands off to Proc in this war, though. They didn't manage to grab that three-star, but Bradders with a 97% and Tom with a 95%. Both came very close in their efforts uh, to get that three-star. Expect to see another one from them later today. We're actually going to watch all three of Proc's wars in the next couple uh, of matches coming up. 
but with that two star in this attack, I am Vince Post has secured victory for Proc over Blaze JP. They'll be moving on into war number two relatively soon. Uh, we got another 30 seconds as the minions and Lava Pup try to get another few buildings out here on the outside. It looks like they're going to get picked off right there, and the battle for Proc is going to finish up at a 77% two star. First win of the day goes to Proc. They beat Blaze JP live here on stage. They will obviously stay as we heard already. So is it the start of a streak? Or maybe will the next one be way tougher than the first one? We're going to be seeing Proc on the screen here. The stream for three times. That was the first one. So two more. And we saw a couple really high percent two stars there. Almost got the three. Just was not able to connect. Congratulations to our two players here. We'll get a chance uh, to take a quick look at that last attack there. The replay on screen shows the Grand Warden Eternal Tome ability coming in at a crucial moment there to protect those balloons. You see that single target Inferno heating up against the balloons, giving them a little bit of uh, pressure there in the center of the base, but not quite as much as what you would expect from a multi-target Inferno. I am Fence Post attacking uh, the space with all the might and fervor that Proc had to muster, an aerial uh, assault that got a great 77% uh, hit against the Blaze JP base. We had some couple of good attacks there, a couple of wide different strategies. Was like to see the kind of Queen Charge Alala, Queen Charge Miners, and some P.E.K.K.A. Smash. But now we're over going to be on the couch with Renee. Thanks, yeah, I'm over here with Tom from Proc, just coming off their first wall here, live on stage. You, you will stay on stage for a while, uh, that's clear. You guys have been here for the second time. The same for your opponent, Blaze. Was there anything that you really prepared specifically for this war to have a good start into your day? Yeah, getting our passports a little bit early so we weren't messing <laughs> around the weeks before trying to get passports and not playing in bases and doing stuff that we were supposed to do. You had some great attacks, close to 100%, and you won this war, but uh, if we if we compare that to the wars we had in the back, both teams did 12 stars, and you sit on 10, even coming off with a win. Do you need to be more aggressive now going forward to catch up to that? Maybe a little bit was bad luck, maybe a little bit more aggressive, but yes, we will need the triples to win, and we will get them. All right, thanks from good luck with the next one. Obviously, Proc is playing some more wars here live on stage, and I'm heading over once again to Itsu. Itsu, what do you got for us? I got the attack from Tom, and he got really, really uh, close to the three star. And he's using the Pekka Smash, but with a really nice touch on that. Especially when you're seeing those town halls on the outside of the space, for example, like over here, where you can just make sure that pretty much you can just like ignore it. Because as soon as you're like getting close to the 50% and getting over the 50% mark, you're activating the town hall. The town hall is getting a weapon, which means. Uh, troops like Hawks, like the Slammer, like Loons, etc. can target it and this means he can delay a Slammer onto the Town Hall, which, which means pretty much at any point the one star for the Town Hall is safe, so he doesn't really have to care anymore about the Town Hall. This said, he only has to go for his Queen Ward and he's doing a really nice thing, knowing there is an Arch Tower in the second layer where he cannot reach anything, which means if there would be an air defense, he would lose all of his healers. So he's really nicely seeing that weakness in the base, making sure that he can like walk the entire side, then jumping in because, well, he has no war record for that entry because the slammer is already planned for the town hall to make sure that he's at least getting the second star. The percentage is done by the main push, which, which is the Pekka, bowler and healer with the queen combination, but due to the queen getting a bit delayed and getting stalled out by the enemy clan castle, the healers are not really switching to his Pekkas, to his main tanks, what you normally want to have. And this means a lot of troops are dying in the core, which is in the end the main reason why this attack got only close to a triple, but wasn't a triple in the end. So we hope to see more triples in the next attack or in the next war to get back to Rene. Thanks, it's I'm absolutely sure that we'll get more three stars. We just finished round one, and we saw obviously the Dark Loot is winning backstage, and we have Proc winning here on stage. But there's a little bit of gap already right now. It's like you won with 10 stars, but you're trailing by two to the current teams that would be in playoffs if this will be the end. Yeah, we're seeing from Group B the leaderboards. Dark Looters leading the charge at 12 with the 94%, and then Nova, who's going to be on the screen right now, playing Proc. So I'm going to be excited to see this next war, see what Nova and Proc can do. Nova and Dark Looters both had each other in their crosshairs. It's a good chance that they both prepared really hard for that first war. So maybe that's the best performance we'll see from them all day. Or maybe they'll just keep the pressure up and hit the gas pedal again and make this lead even stronger. 
Yeah, there's no time for any breaks. You really need to be focused, concentrated to make it here to the players in the Clash of Clans World Championship. And up next on stage is Nova. Uh, uh,大家好,我们是Nova 我们作为一个团队一起玩了有三到四年的时间了我们由三月份开始就一直在努力尝试赢得来卡托维兹的机会然后七月份是我们第二次来卡托维兹我们的部落团结友爱有三星大神然后在不断追求完美的过程中我们
I am Fence Post attacking back to back. The last attack in the previous war and the first one in this war using a lava loon both times, but couldn't take out that enemy Archer Queen. And that is just a huge upset on this offense. He's gonna have to use that last free spell to finish her off, but still with two multi-target Infernos in the background, I think he's just gonna rely on these minions and Electro Dragon to get a bit more cleanup. Three stars is a bit too far. Yeah, he's gonna get in the 80s, it looks like. Doesn't manage, uh, maybe can get into the 90s. The Queen helps take out that gold. He does take it out right there. He's at 86, should get about 87, 88, 89. It's gonna be really close. And it's going to still be better than the previous hit here. The E-Drag, I don't know how much health this E-Drag actually has. And it can move through with only about 50 seconds left in this raid. Still a really good hit to kick it off for Proc here. Nova got an 89% destruction average in their previous war. And it looks like I Am Fence Post is just about to cross that 89% threshold. That means that if Brock does go to a percentage tie against Nova, they'll have a little bit of an advantage thanks to Proc's first attack here. This Electro Dragon getting some fantastic bouncing lightning off of these uh, defensive buildings here, but as it goes down, the last two lightning strikes will leave I Am Fence Post at the 92% point. 92%, two star is still really good to kick off a war, and all the pressure is on. We're taking a look at the replay, flying in, and that queen ended up actually walking into the right side of the base. I am assuming he wanted that queen to continue to go left, but the Tesla's pulled the queen in, and he never wanted to pull the CC out, which could have had a lava, and it did, which ended up stalling the queen and that E-Drag in the core. Stalled, but not out of the competition. She's still got a few shots in there. Next up, we're going back to the side of Nova, where an experienced pro is gonna be moving in next. He said that his favorite attack is Hog Riders. Cold Yi is bringing the Hog Riders to this battle. He said that his hogs can be made invincible. That's his superpower, a one second invincibility for his Hog Riders. I've yet to see that sort of power in the game, but maybe Cold Yi is not, as it knows something that we don't, current fit. Maybe he does know how to use these Hog Riders so well. Let's see if he can try to get a three star with them, but he's got the queen charge and a quad quake, four of them, which will actually open up 10 tiles now and let the queen continue to charge through this base. Get some nice bowler skips on the top side, drops the king over on the left. Now the Grand Warden's gonna follow this queen inside that base, and there we go. There's the quad quake to open up the whole core, and out comes a dragon and some archers, not a lot of how pops that Grand Warden turtle tone pretty early. Poison spell against those CC troops gonna work really well against so many Archers there. Archer Queen takes down the enemy Dragon and that CC is down for the count. Going in against the enemy Archer Queen next, you'll be able to take a few shots against her and the uh, Town Hall, in fact. Both of them are going down right away and that's gonna be the first star for Cold Yi. He says he runs a construction company, but he is a master of destruction right now. Sends the Hog Riders into the top left side of the map and oh, they're gonna hit a giant bomb early. That might require a heal spell. Sure does. We're going to see a heal spell coming out and a multi-target Inferno and a wizard tower going down. They really need to focus on those splash damage structures early, Carbon Finn. Unfortunately, with the Grand Ward on the bottom side, he couldn't use the Grand Ward internal tome with the hogs on the top, so he's just going to try to heal his way through all of that. And now they're cooping up. He's finding almost every single giant bomb. Pulling the skellies, unfortunately, goes into another multi-target and another giant bomb. These hogs are just getting hit so much. Doesn't have any more heals. Just gonna pass into the 70% range, which is looking pretty good for Proc, which is they ended up with a 92 in their first attack. And he's just trying to get some more percent with some minions and a wizard up top. This Grand Warden is going for the Builder Hut right there, and will try to grab as much as he possibly can with just over a minute left. I really love the first stage of this attack going after the enemy Archer Queen and that Town Hall early on to give those hogs all the clearance they need to try to go for a sweep from the top left to bottom right. It turns out at the end that he was just a bit short of being able to accomplish that goal, but Cold Yi came startlingly close to a three star at 80% two star finishing up. Both teams with a good start into round two, but once again it's Brock leading the way here in their second match on stage. Taking the lead is crucial in the beginning of the war. It lets the rest of the clan mates know what they need to get, and potentially it's not as much pressure, but it, the pressure will be put onto Nova. They're not too far behind, but in this attack, the Grand Warden was used with the Queen charge into the base, which was pretty surprising. Usually you see it come with either the balloons or the hogs, if that's the type of raid. 
Yeah, it's those little creative choices that these players make use of to get a few more buildings down early on and give them a better shot at three stars. Bratters is going to be moving in next again. The second attack from Proc. He said that his teammates are all really chill, but also very serious about getting the wins. You're going to expect to see them try to get another victory over Nova right now. They're leading, uh, but as you noted, Carmen Finn, it's not a decisive edge just yet. Only a 2.4% destruction advantage right now. He took a Queen Walk E-Drag attack with his first one, and he's doing it again here. He must really love this attack strategy, and he's going to send the E-Dragons and Stone Slammer towards this Town Hall. Hopefully he can try to take it down, freezes it right there, and that Stone Slammer can take it out all by itself, but a Siege Machine does not actually get affected by a spell. So the E-Dragon that King was actually being used right there for, and pops the Grand One Chelchum, out come some Valkyries, a Goblins, Archers, a Witch, and a Baby Dragon, and now these E-Dragons are just getting spun around in this core, absolutely getting hit by everything. They need to get some nice chain value. If they can, it's going to be so much value in the core. Lots of great value from that poison spell, hitting a ton of clan castle troops on the backside, but these electric dragons haven't really spread out too much until it's been a bit too late now. Most of them really low on hit points, and I don't expect to see this go much further than the 54% destruction that we're at right now. On Bratter's side, though, he does still have that Archer Queen ability and another free spell in the wings to try to take out some more buildings uh, along the left side. He actually should be able to get quite a bit of cleanup uh, along the left lane, but three stars is not going to be easy with a multi-target Inferno still standing. Yeah, as this Queen is going to continue to walk down this base, she can't reach that Expo. Drops the Freeze, and now the Expo is going to start to target the healers as the Queen gets out of range of it, and now the healers are going down. Still has that Royal Cloak ability of the Queen to try to get as much percentage as possible. And he did end up getting a 97% two-star in the first attack with the Queen Walk E-Dragons. But it doesn't look like it's going to be that high in this one. But he still loves using it. Moving through, going to pop that Queen ability. Going to help try to get as much percentage as possible, get in the high 70s, and almost reach the 80s. Yeah, I gotta say, I, I, I think those Electro Dragons were widely kind of underestimated for a while. They were kind of expected to be the two-star masters, but rarely got the three stars until we saw them in use here at the Clash of Clans World Championship Qualifier a few months ago when they've started to pick up in popularity. We've seen players now able to grab the three stars with it, not quite this time for Bratters, but a bold strike uh, sometimes rewards you. You know, they say fa fortune favors the bold, so I gotta hand it to Bratters uh, coming in with another really high percentage two-star hit. Yeah, E-Dragons can be work really well on specific bases, but they do help you lock in the two when you really want to try to go in for the three. But now we have LMF of Nova coming in, and he got a 99% two-star in the previous war with Queen Charge Lalo. Can he get that one extra percent in this next attack, which is going to be a Queen Charge Hawks? Clever Coconut Loon catches the Seeking Air Mine along the left corner of the space, and LMF is wasting no time, already sending in the heroes along the top corner. They're going to try to help with the funnel a bit more, and maybe even go in to get a few shots at that Town Hall if he can keep this Queen alive. He's not providing uh, healers for her just yet, but he does have five in tow. Expect to see them deployed as soon as that air defense goes down. Want to make sure that they don't take any unnecessary shots. Meanwhile, Bergarian King along the top right side of the space is going to engage the enemy Barb King and take him down. Nice cleanup along uh, the top right edge of the space is going to open up uh, for these 30 Hog Riders coming in next. The Queen is moving in, going to take this jump into the core to the enemy Queen. Going to try to take out this air defense, the expo, and that multi, and has tons of value. And once he reaches potentially the 51%, the Hogs can go near the Town Hall, but he does have a Miner. He could send the Miner to go for the Town Hall to activate it, and then the Hogs will target the Town Hall. Let's go ahead and see what he decides to do. Out comes the Baby Dragon. There also could be a Lava Hound in there, so he's dropping that poison pretty early. Did drop it early. You would expect him to hold on to that poison and use it against the Lava Pups. It uh, looks like there's nothing wandering uh, within range of the Clan Castle, though, I guess. Maybe once uh, something gets closer, he could see something else come out. But Hog Riders are going to make their move now. They're swarming in from the top right side, just about ready to get that Town Hall activated. But they're not going for it yet, Carbon Finn. No, they're going to pass right by it. He still has that Stone Slammer, so he knows he's going to be safe to at least get the Town Hall with that. But the Queen goes down on the left side. And look at that. It was witches in this clan castle. So these witches and all these skellies are just going to overwhelm these hogs so fast. He probably thought there was going to be a Lava Hound. Usually it's a Lava Hound 
paired it with a baby dragon but unfortunately it was just the baby that came out and he had no idea what else was in there and he dropped that poison really early the balloons come out of the of the clan castle can they get the town hall with the death damage the town hall will take them down and there goes the balloons but at least he locked up the two star right there. We did see I Am Finspost use that baby dragon, witch, and archer combination in his previous clan castle. So seeing a bit of a boost to his defenses from that off meta pick, LMF running into a tricky situation as the center of this base is going to remain standing. That clan castle firing away at the hog riders and eagle artillery pounding down on them. We did get to 71% now, uh, but it Seems that's going to be the end of it. One last final minion shot down out of the skies from a bevy of archers below. And the minion goes down, finishes it off for LMF of Nova with a two star 71%. Also off to two attacks on both sides. There's no chance for Nova to catch up to proc just yet, at least in terms of percentage. Looking at the other game that's played in the back, seems like the Dark Loot just once again striking hard there against Blaze JP. Both teams with two attacks so far, and Blaze are only coming out with 13 stars from there. Obviously not 13 from just that match. Yeah, Dark Looters got went two for two with Bomb and Veil vale getting two triples. But we're taking a look at the replay here with the Hogs coming in from the top side. Pop that Grand Warden Eternal Tome, but the unfortunate thing was the witches that came out of the clan castle, just that just wrecked through these hogs. Next up is going to be Yawn again from Proc. Yawn is a dog shelter worker in Israel. He said that he wants to use his prize money to learn how to be a dog trainer. He's a dog lover all around, Carbon Finn, but uh, He's going to be playing this time with P.E.K.K.A.s and Bowlers, that P.E.K.K.A. smash strategy known as one of the heaviest ground attacks in the game. Really relies on jump or earthquake spells to get those heavy hitters into the base. Uh, does a little bit of funneling work on the bottom left with those balloons, and we'll use this uh, queen charge with healers to get into the core of the base along with those P.E.K.K.A.s and Bowlers. He's setting that funnel to make sure the queen's going to go up from the left to the top side and then he can have the potential either Stone Slammer to open it up Wall Wrecker or have the Stone Slammer fly through the back end and use two jumps to jump into the beginning part of the base and through the core, which looks like is what he wants to do. The Queen's under the raid uses the Wizard to potentially try to help at least clear that and get his way through. The Queen doesn't go up, but she goes down the base. I think he really wanted them to go through the top side and meet into the core. What is he going to do? He's going to have to adjust on the fly. I kind of wonder why he used that wizard to take out the army camp if he wanted his queen to go up instead of down. Uh, I don't, I don't want to call it too soon here, but it looks like he will use the Barbarian King now instead to get the uh, trash buildings out on the top side of the base. That is a bit weird now though, that he's got his, this uh, uh, jump spell ready with the queen along the opposite side. She did manage to pull the clan castle out, so that's a little bit of a boost for Yon here, but without any poison available to take down those archers, he could have a bit of a tricky time. Now he's going to probably have to save the stone slammer for the town hall, but he misfires with that poison on the right side of the screen. He might have tried to been zooming out and drops it, so he couldn't use it. And the queen had to burn her ability through these puffs and that lava hound. And now these bowlers are going to try to help take this town hall down but he's gonna fall short there. At least he hung on to that stone slammer, and he's now gonna have to save it for the town hall as a backup insurance policy right here. And he unfortunately couldn't use it in the rest of the base. He wanted everything to funnel into the top side, have the healers meet up with the bowlers, but the queen walked the wrong way. He still went with the same strategy, even though the queen went down south, and that could have cost him right there. Still saved the two star nonetheless, and that stone slammer is gonna move through. Still has some balloons and that final haste spell. Holding onto that Stone Slammer is always a fantastic insurance policy. As long as you're able to clear out all the defensive buildings around that town hall, it'll go straight for it. The two star is now within Jan's grasp. He's passing that 67% uh, damage point and still has a few remaining troops to get clean up. Because he was able to take out the Eagle artillery, he can uh, kind of be a little bit choosy about where he uh, decides to deploy those troops now, but it only has 30 seconds left to get as many buildings as he can. He finds a few on the bottom of this base. He might be able to snipe that arm or the uh, siege workshop over on the right side. Try to get the spell factory there with a the minion, but the archer tower was just within range. 13 seconds left to deploy, and he's going to have to get these final troops down. He's only got seven seconds. He's not even using them. That's some percentage that he's losing out on potentially. Just gets a 72 right there. He's going to finish up. 72% two-star with that P.E.K.K.A. smash. 
And he definitely wanted to try to get a little bit more than that. But still, it's looking good for Proc right now, but they're looking to go for the three. They really need one. An advantage overall still for Proc in terms of percentage destruction. No three stars yet in this war. I'm starting to wonder if Proc's advantage here uh, in the clan uh, World Championship is actually going to be their defense. They haven't been three starred yet, uh, despite Nova having gotten a 12 star uh, draw against the Dark Looters in their previous match. We're going to be going over to the other side of the field where Nova will get a chance to shoot back. Nova's going to be looking to jump into this next attack with the Sui. Alalo has two skeleton spells. And now Yan, who was just attacking, is now getting hit. Uses a nice, beautiful bowler bounce right there onto the storage and then onto this air defense. And that should also set up a funnel right there with the Archer Tower. And he's going to try to use the King to loop around. Has five wall breakers. Hopefully he doesn't use too many or he finds a small bomb. Got to make sure he hits it. But as you can also see these players are trying to compete for the ESL one in Hamburg. But you guys can also buy your tickets right now if you want to see the World Finals out in October. That's right, Carbon Finn. The World Finals has a total $1 million prize pool this year. So really excited to see the top teams compete for such a huge uh, pile of cash. They got a lot of gold coming their way if they can get the win. But only one team out of the eight here in July is going to get to move on to the World Championship. This Group B matchup currently has the Dark Looters and Nova ahead with 12 stars total. Proc leading in both wars so far, though, might still have a chance to move on. They're going to have to get a few three stars because Nova did that in their first match. But hold the Lava Hound here, and uh-oh, is this Queen going to go into the Town Hall? She does. Is he going to pop this Queen ability before the Lava Hound flies over to her? And he did pull the full CC. That Town Hall does go down. So he got the objective complete and grabbed the Wizard Tower, and the Queen won't be able to do anything else because she <laughs> wants to run over all the way to that Lava Hound. And look at this. We have a blimp flying in over this next section. Drops the Rage. Out comes an E-Dragon, and he's going to try to clear a path to fly and use the two Skellies for the Queen. Beautiful positioning by this Electric Dragon takes out a few of those key defensive structures on the right side corner of the base, including that multi-target Inferno. Still two left, as well as an Eagle Artillery and the Archer Queen in the center here. UCP's got a lot to worry about, but he does have a few aces up his sleeve. He's still got those two skeleton spells to use on the enemy Archer Queen. Still holding on to a Rage at two haste spells and a Freeze to get these balloons on target. They're spread out beautifully, Carbon Finn. They're taking down a lot of these outside structures, but will they coalesce into the middle? Uh, with an eternal tome that can keep them up. Unfortunately, the E-Drag in that beginning with the blimp was not able to take down that Eagle Artillery, so it's firing down on everything. Dropped the Rage Spell in the core and tried to use the Skellies to take out the enemy Queen, but it looks like they're just running all the way around. Freezes this multi. That Eagle, can it go down with the death of the balloon? It's gonna be so close. It does go down. He does a bullet to help clean up in the top. Has to clean up around, but he's just got the Expo, some air defenses, quite a bit of stuff still left up that was going to be firing down, and, and that queen never went down in yeah, the core. Those skeletons were just a wall. I didn't even see where they got deployed, but their job to take out the queen uh, did not meet expectations. UZP at two stars, though, did get a pretty solid strike on this base. Has a few more uh, troops to get some more chip damage along the outside, and it looks like we'll clear out with 74% total. Both teams not yet capable of applying pressure on each other, but with that they're applying pressure to their last attacks, that's for sure. Another two up, and both teams really close to each other right now. They're neck and neck. It's going to come down to the final attacks. They're looking for three stars with the two triples that Nova got in that first war. They're looking pretty good, so Proc needs to answer with some three stars of their own. But we're going to take a look at the next attack from Godlin of Proc. He wants to try to get them their first three star today. Remember, Goblin used Lava Loon with two Electro Dragons last time. This time, though, he's going on the ground. It seems he's brought 11 Witches, a really uncommon attack strategy, especially at the top level. Uh, it's a bat slap. I don't think we've seen any bats at all yesterday and none so far today, Carbon Finn. No, we have not. We got 11 Witches. They're going to try to overwhelm this base here. The Town Hall is exposed on the right side over the top up there against Wei. So very interesting what he's decided to do right there. Now the Queen's going to help charge in, drop some. The balloons come out of that wall wrecker, finds a tornado trap pretty early there. And he's going to have the Ice Golem P.E.K.K.A. and 11 Witches 
just to move through this base. Doesn't have a jump spell. So the Queen's gonna try to remove this section down here, but pulls out the Lava Hound, the Archers, and hopefully he can get through this. There's only one ground expo, and there is the Ice Golem. And get ready for potentially all the witches that come down from the top side going into the Town Hall. Dropped them all in one spot at the corner. A bit of a risky play. If he had found a giant bomb or something nearby, he might have had a lot of trouble. But the witches are doing their job, spawning skeletons along the right side to support this Barbarian King. That is just a massive wave of troops moving in, Carbon Fit. Now he's going to try to overwhelm this Town Hall. He still has five bats and three freezes. He can try to use that and freeze all the splash damage as the bats are moving around. Still has one balloon as well. Look at all these skellies just completely overwhelmed. That Town Hall pops the Grand Warden and Eternal Tome. Doesn't have the Queen ability anymore, but she's working her way through the middle and the core of this base. And here comes the bats from the bottom side. He's going to use three freezes, at least on this bottom section. Beautiful freeze right there, getting the Wizard Tower and the Multi. The Queen's going to help freezes that again. And he's got some witches on the top. He's got the bats on the bottom. And that Queen is staying up in the core. Ice Golem, Free Spell, Skeletons and Witches. This is starting to look like the Battle of Winterfell. The defenses are getting absolutely overwhelmed here as Goblin is moving in, still with many of his witches doing quite well. He does have a multi-target Inferno to have to encounter up here at the top, which can burn up those skeletons really quickly. But I think he's got a great battle strategy that's been able to uh, prove successful through the bulk of this base. It looks like three stars is within reach here, Carbon Finn. It's going to be really close. He's taking out all the defenses now. It's just a matter of cleanup. He's got 37 seconds and is just counting down. The witches are going to be able to get through this wall really quickly with all of these skeletons. And he was just able to overwhelm the complete top side of the base. Didn't even need the healers for the witches. Use that Grand Warden and Eternal Tome. There's only 20 seconds left. And this looks like it's going to be the first three star here for a proc of the day. They definitely needed this. What a clutch attack. Dodging giant bombs all day long. Goblin with an unconventional strategy scores the three stars for Proc. And he gets it done. What a beautiful job. First time I believe we even saw a bath in the competition this, today, even, if, even before. And the witches just overwhelmed the top side here and took out this town hall really quickly. And beautiful Grain Award in Eternal Tome. And that queen just used that inner alley to walk all the way through, and the bass just cleared the bottom side. You find so many bases that are structured to defend against Laloon, Hogs, Miners, and Pekka Smash. You start to find bases that eventually don't have great defenses against such a massive swarm of troops. You really need those multi-target Infernos to burn hard early on or get a few lucky giant bomb uh, deploys in order to take out that many skeletons. Without that sort of defense way, has now fallen to Goblin in the first three star today. But let's take a look now at the next attack from Nova. LP is moving in. LP is moving in. He did get a three star with Queen Charge Hogs. He's looking to repeat that performance again here. Charging in to take out this multi-target Inferno. The King pops his ability. He doesn't have a jump, but he has 29 Hog Riders. They're going to be moving through. The Queen is going to go and be able to actually reach over this wall and grab the Town Hall. That's a lot of value that he realized. So beautiful job breaking into this section. And now he can try to set this funnel to make sure that the Hogs move around. And still is going to use two Skellies for the Hogs. This is looking really strong. Archer Queen quite healthy along the bottom side of this base with her healers in tow. Getting some support now from the Stone Slammer moving in. She's already got the first star down, so LP just has to focus on getting the percentage now. He's got that enemy Archer Queen and the Eagle Artillery menacingly staring them down from the left side of the base. Doesn't uh, seem to have a clear way of taking that out. He's got two skeleton spells, but we've seen that fall short for Nova before. He'll have to get a good track on uh, with those skeleton spells to be able to take her down. Now has activated the Eagle Artillery and uh, is really got to be faced up against time now. A minute 30 left to get the job done. Well, this is really good because he has the Queen clearing the whole top side there, but she lost all the healers, unfortunately. Now has the Hogs move through the core, drops that freeze, double Skelly, but did he drop it in the wrong compartment? I think he did, and that Multi can reach the Skellies, unfortunately. Oh, no. He still has that Grand War Internal Tome. He does pop it. But there's no way to take out that queen because they're in the wrong compartment there. And the queen's going to go down the top side. 
And unfortunately, Skellies are not going to do anything but be on the wall because of the Archer and the Archer Queen there. Got an incomplete pull of the Clan Castle as well. A few Archers also helping out on defense here. El Period is a student and a return competitor from the June qualifier. He said he's really proud here to represent his clan, Nova Mao Do, and he's done a fantastic job uh, in previous attacks. He was actually one of the three-star hitters against Dark Looters earlier on today, but gonna move past this second hit with just two stars and uh, at 83 percent. Pressure's definitely on with Prox scoring three stars and Nova once again with just two. Also in the background we see that the Dark Loot has had two three star attacks already then another two two stars and even with Blaze being solid with only two star attacks it seems like the Dark Looters are leaping ahead. Dark Looters are setting the tone, getting another 12-star war. Unbelievable, that's four so far in the two wars. A beautiful job, but in this replay, what stood out was the skeleton spells were dropped in the wrong compartment, and that queen, unfortunately, had no chance of going down. 40% hit rate. We haven't seen anything strong like that since, I think, INTZ from the June qualifier. They'll be playing again tomorrow, but next up is going to be Tom from Proc. He's the fifth and final attacker, the last round in the chamber. He said it's a true honor to be returning here for the second time. He's a hog rider expert, and Tom brought Pekka and Bowlers to his last attack. He got a two-star 95%, so just has a little bit more to push in there if he wants to get another three for his team. And Woody, he's coming in with another pack of smash here. Drop the balloon on the mortar on the outside. Just the one drop in the death of the balloon is enough to help take it down. Queen's going to be at 6 o'clock, and she's going to look to loop down and around the base. We do have the eagle that is behind the wall there, so the queen actually can't reach it. So it's going to be interesting to see where the queen walks and tries to charge into the space. Actually has his... Stone, Siege Machine set to a Stone Slammer and not set to a Wall Wrecker, but he still has two jump spells to try to charge into this base here with the Pekkas and the Bowlers. That's right, Carbathine. Of course, he could change that Siege Machine on the fly if he does feel like he needs to switch out to a Wall Wrecker, but the fact that he's already got it selected on Stone Slammer makes it seem like he's got that at least uh, available as an insurance policy to take down that Town Hall, or maybe he's got a, an unorthodox method of using it here. He's going to use Jump Spells to get into the space. He uses the first one on the outer section uh, of walls to help this P.E.K.K.A. Boulder combination make it into the Eagle Artillery first. Key to take down such a heavy splash damage target early on in this attack. That jump is leading to the eagle. He drops his second jump leading to the town hall compartment. And that jump just covers that multi on the right side. Out comes the defending lava and baby dragon. And he's pushing his way through. That queen is still going to be firing on. The Pekka's going to take it down. And she is now moving her way through the base. The baby dragon is in the poison. That town hall is activated. And the Pekka's are going to be able to take the town hall down. No problem. There it goes. Drops some balloons on the right side, still has another Rage and a free spell. The Queen's going to help remove that air defense, and some of these balloons going to get some nice value. And this Stone Slammer could fly from the left side. There's no air defense over there to take, pick it off. Two really healthy Pekkas left for Tom's attack. He lost his bowlers a bit early, and I think those Pekkas got spun around a bit in that tornado trap. Still, they've destroyed all of the key targets on the center uh, and the bottom left compartments of the space. Stone Slammer will get the last to the bottom right, but can he finish off these final two compartments? Still has two multi-target Inferno. Bleh, strike that. One multi-target Inferno left as the Pekka gets another shot at her key target. Loses a healer now to an air defense along the top side. He's going to drop that free spell to try to keep them safe on the back end. Stone Slammer now coming in. This is the cavalry striking Carbon Finn. Can it get the hits that it needs on the left side compartment to seal the deal for three stars? Seems unlikely. Oh, but that Grand Warden went down. It was looking to pick off that air defense, which it was firing on the healers. And then now out comes the balloons and they're going to be trying to fly through this multi. The air skellies are going to help take the balloons down even quicker, but that's still going to be in the 80s, going to try to reach into the 90%. Pops the Queen Royal Cloak right there. We're going to take a look at the Group B standings at the top right with the Dark Looters finishing at a 94 and a 93 0.5% overall destruction, absolutely beautiful. And Blaze JP is sitting at 19. They didn't get a three star. They finished with just 10 in that war. And there it is with Tom's attack. The two star from Tom will put Proc into second place. But if Nova gets another two star to follow up with, they'll edge back ahead. 
Brock victorious in their first war, and it seems like they're going to have the win in the bag against Nova. Even if Nova gets the three star in their next attack, it seems like they're still pretty far behind on percentage destruction, and so Brock would have the edge there. We're gonna take one last look though at Wei, the final attacker from Nova. He says hogs are his favorite troop, but if he has to describe his favorite attack strategy, he's more likely to go for Queen, Walk, Lalo. He had some pretty funny answers on uh, the internal poll that we asked him beforehand. He says his teammates are all noobs. He's the top player of all. His job is 007, so he's the James Bond of the Nova team. Uh, and he can mind control his queen too, so some amazing abilities out of way. Let's see if that three-star attack in the first war can be followed up again. We've heard that before where they can control the queen, <laughs> and that's actually shown in some of the attacks where the queen's walked out and then inside of the base. It's unbelievable. But in this one, not using the queen, but using that Grand Warden with the healer is going to try to get as much value as he can because that Grand Warden can actually jump over walls. So his radius is a little different than the Archer Queen sends the wall wrecker into this topside wall. And he's going to try to charge in, has six bowlers, and he's going to send the King, the Queen. The Warden now follows over here, drops the poison on the Dragon and the Archers, and he's going to try to jump into the core section and take out the enemy Queen. Finds a big clump of ground troops right on top of this Town Hall, as soon as a Giga Tesla fires off and drops the bomb, we see that eternal turn mobility from the Grand Warden. Another jump spell to get these troops right back on target. They are going at a lightning pace here. Breakneck speed through the center of the base, crashing in with an ice golem popping and dropping uh, that free spell all around the center of the base. We get a few of the boulders wandering off into the bottom section, trying to go for that multi-target Inferno, but not able to take it down. Still have the Grand Warden now uh, right in front, actually taking the brunt of the blows from this bottom section of base. The Hog Riders are moving in now from the left side, and it seems like they've got a couple of heal spells left to try to keep them alive, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to get it all the way to the bottom section there, Carmen Finn. The Hogs are moving. He has the cleanup down, but this Queen Pops ability here, he's got a lot left on the board. Can he? The Hogs are in that heal actually with that multi-targeting Inferno going down in the final balloon. The Dang. King on the outside. This is looking really good for a three-star. Right. The first one of this match for Nova. Look at these hogs. He's looking at it and they're definitely clapping for it. They know it's going to be a three with plenty of time remaining. What a beautiful attack right there. And he's going to be able to try to clean it up. Finds a giant pump. Well, that's not going to make a difference. He's done it! Applause and high fives from his teammate. Nova has managed to get another three star on the board. That'll leave them with an 11 star total and 81 percent 0.6 percentage uh, destruction here. Not enough to surpass Proc, but another three star on the board will keep them comfortably in second place in Group B. Proc keeping the streak alive, winning their second match, but what an end it was. Way catching up with a three star for the side of Nova, which overall leaderboard makes it a lot tougher now for Proc, even with two wins on their side already. That was the first three star of the day for Proc. So what a perfect time to get it. And it helps get that victory over Nova. And that's actually the third three star of the day for Nova. So it's gonna be very interesting for the final standings. Let's take a quick look at the replay here. The final attack from Wei moving in really super fast in the top right side of this base. The early strike takes down several key targets, including the enemy Archer Queen. Uh, a a multi-target Inferno in the bottom compartment and opens up a perfect funnel for these Hog Riders, taking out a couple of Teslas along the top side of the base before they move into their uh, final targets. Uses those heal spells really judiciously to keep them nice and healthy through those Inferno beams, Carbon Finn. Yeah, we saw that Bat Slap coming in. I believe that was the first attack that we saw with the Bat Spell, and it was actually a three-star, so maybe we should see some more with the Bat Spells. But anyways, Renee is ready on the couch with the interview. Thanks, Carbon Finn. Yeah, I'm over here with my man Tom because he seems to uh, visit me a lot. You know, Tom, when you come here the third time, third match, you need to bring me a present. Just say. All right? So you guys won once again here live on stage. Nova 11 11 was the score at the end, and you had the better uh, percentage. But this not, doesn't make it easy for you guys on the leaderboard because you're still trailing by two. Is there anything that you take from the first two matches now to make sure that on the dark loot is you score enough to still be in there for the players? Yes, do better. <laughs> get that extra 5% and awesome. get the triple in. That's what we need and that's what we'll do. I mean, it seems like you, you're kind of running hot right now. You did over 90%, you had your three star. Is it that you guys just take a while to get going on stage? 
No, it's not that. It's just sometimes you have the momentum, sometimes you don't, like anything. Dark Loot is up next. They're coming up uh, two wars with 12, uh, 12 stars each. Is there anything that scares you a bit, or you're, you're just playing your thing? You know, I'm just going to play my thing. We've faced DL a couple times in the past, some victories and a loss here and there, but they're a great team, and we'll hope for the best. All right, we're looking forward to that match. Thanks, Tom. And with that, I'm heading over to Itzy for more insight. Itsu, not Itzy, by the way. Just saying. For more insight for the match. Yeah, we have to take a look at the Witch Attack. That was just insane. And the breakdown of the base was, I think, the most important thing because you have to take a look at all of the important buildings, which are the buildings that are do doing splash damage to those troops. For example, the Inferno Towers. Then we are having the Wizard Towers. And maybe you can already see like a pattern, for example, the Mortar. Um, and all those defenses that can actually target those um, big, large groups of uh, troops overall. What he's doing, he's taking it all, all out with one queen charge and just making sure that the rest pretty much, which is surviving, he's just taking it out with some bets. Meanwhile, the witches have a free weekend taking out the town hall because there's no splash damage that can even touch uh, them. So that's super, super well planned, luring the CC out. And as soon as the CC is gone, like all of the lava pups are on his own queen, meaning they are out of the game. His own witches can go to the town hall really safely and taking that out because he has still the warden ability left and he used the siege machine for the entry, which means that's not available anymore for any back end uh, defenses. But he has so many spells left. He's using a lot of spells for his queen, then the bad spells. No spells for the witches are needed. They're just doing their own thing over there, trying to get through the town hall, through the tornado trap, and it's just insane how strong his queen is going with all of the rage spells he's investing into her. Then the queen is going even further, trying to take out the next wizard tower and the next defense, which is important versus witches. And as soon as he's knowing, okay, I'm ready to go, he's dropping the bats, coming into the inferno tower. He can nicely drop a couple of free spells, making sure that even those troops are surviving. Meanwhile, the witches are going through the wall into the last inferno tower and into the eagle and this completely crushes the space. I think there didn't die too many witches. It was a beauty of an attack, and we hope for more of those. So let's get back to Rene. Thanks, Itsu. Ooh, just making sure. Round two, we fought our way through that. So let's have a quick look once again at what happened so far. Yeah, we saw Dark Looters getting both 12 stars in each one of that and leading the charge. Now they're going to be on stage. Can't wait to see what they can do. Proc has managed to win both of their wars so far, but they're in third place and they're going up against an undefeated top ranked team in the Dark Looters who have a 40% hit rate. Very impressive matchup to follow. Just shows what a tough group it is. Even with two wins here live on stage and not yet in a position to be safe for the playoffs or even at that position right now. So we talked so much about the Dark Looters because they had an awesome performance backstage. It's time to bring them on here, the Dark Looters. Hi, we are from Dark Looters from Germany. We are in the second time here in the Kwartovich in the Feuerwehr qualifier. The last time we were here in April, and this time in July, we finally made it the second time with a little bit different team, but we are really motivated and hoping for the best. On our opinion, all of the seven teams here in Poland are really, really strong opponents. But if I had to pick one opponent, I would pick Top of Japan because they, has, they are, I think, the third time here in Poland, so they bring a lot of experience. And I've seen their bases, I've seen their attacks. They are really strong. We are really close friends to Tribe Gaming, who already qualified in March qualifiers. And this is a high motivation for us to be the second German team um, to qualify for the World Championship. And I think um, we, will, we want to prove that the German community is worldwide one of the strongest. They want to be the second German lineup making it to the World Championship later in October. Kicking off with Dark Looters, we got Boom, Vale, Sir Iron, Jojo, and Knowledge. Third time's the charm for Proc, returning with Bratters, Yawn, I am Fence Post, Goblin, and Tom. 
under pressure, obviously now apply to the Dark Lucy. He said it in the video, they're here the second time. Tribe Gaming, their friends, they managed already to qualify. And uh, having a, b a great start with two times 12 stars, but it also means that everyone expects them to win right now here on stage against Proc. And Proc having their own streak running two wins in a row. So this is a big, big matchup for round number three. Here we go, it's the Dark Looters versus Proc. This is Dark Looters. They're the number one spot right now with four three stars overall. I can't wait to see what Vale can do because he actually has two triples. But now we got Boom coming in. He's got a triple as well coming off the last war with the Sui Lalo. Dark Looters might be one of the most well-known clan names in all of competitive Clash of Clans with years of experience in competition and following a very impressive lineage from having uh, one of their sister clans qualify in the March qualifier and moving on to join Tribe Gaming. The second team from Germany qualified uh, through in-game competition. They were number four on the in-game clan war leaderboards and are returning from the April qualifier. This group has only been together for three months, but they've all been playing together in the game for many years. Boom is coming in with the Queen Charge Lalo. This is his specialty. He's one of the best in the world at this, so he's definitely gonna try to take the base down. And the Queen, oh, beautiful drop that balloon. Pulls the Seeking Air Mine and protects a healer. And he's actually only taking one Lava Hound. And he's gonna try to use another Wall Breaker to open up the next compartment. And he does at the bottom side, uses that Wizard actually to distract the cannon. Can he get a second Wall Break? Look at those Wall Breaks into the core of his base. A double Wall Break is fantastic value for Boom early on here. Sometimes you'd see players drop a Jump Spell to crack through two layers of walls like that, but not Boom. With great timing on those Wall Breakers, makes it all the way into that compartment and takes down the enemy Eagle Artillery. A great value for that small investment. Now starting the Lalo, even before he took out the enemy queen, through the queen ability that he, the queen is gonna go down, doesn't have to worry about any eagle artillery firing down on his troops because he can just fly through no problem, drops the poison on some of the archers that do come out. The Grand Warden's coming from the top side. This is looking super strong, but the queen ended up actually going down at the bottom, decided not to use a rage down there to keep her alive with the healers. He must not have seen it, but he does reach 50%. One more, and the town hall is activated, and he's flying through here. The Grand Warden pops his Eternal Tome, doesn't clip some of those balloons that flew from the right side, still has two more hastes and one more free spell. Boom, an expert with loons and Queen Charge earned a three-star strike against Oshi Lukun in the previous war against Blaze JP. Can he keep the streak up? It looks very likely right now. He said that one of his superpowers is the ability to predict how a match is going to unfold as the troops travel around the map. Well, he doesn't have a whole lot to worry about at this point with 90% overall damage and only 37 seconds left. It looks like he's clear to go for the three-star strike. Woody, this looks to be another three star for him today. It's gonna to be the second one, and he's gonna help take down the storage just 24 seconds. He's just gotta to go to the bottom side, hopefully on time. Does he have enough? Hopefully there's nothing in the corners. He's celebrating, he's cheering, he's looking on with this Grand Warden gonna help with 13 seconds left. That's gonna kick off this war with a three star for a boom of dark looters. High fives don't lie. He's putting the BM in boom. Three stars is a dominant start for this war. Proc is gonna have to hit hard if they wanna keep pace. And this was an unbelievable wall break. Not only did he wall break that initial entry for the queen, but then he double wall, wall broke the next section. If the wall breakers are under a rage spell, you only need actually one of them to break through a max level 13 wall. And he showed you right there. Going from all smiles to very serious now. Proc has got to keep up that two star average and improve on it. They've got one three star on the board from their previous war, but they need to get a couple of more against the Dark Looters, one of the strongest defenses in the game. It's gonna be up to Tom first. He's the second in command over at the Proc General Staff, and he's gonna be moving in once again with a P.E.K.K.A. Smash strategy. Uh, Tom used P.E.K.K.A. Bowlers in in both of his previous two attacks, so he is an expert with this lineup. Can he keep pace against the Dark Looters? Setting up the funnel with the E-Dragon. What an interesting base here. Has the Town Hall on the side. He's got some walls there trying to protect it to make it interesting to charge into here. And they're 
is a ground expo that is behind the town hall for anything that's charging in. That sweepers are pointed over the queen, but he's just gonna try to overwhelm this town hall and take it down through the core. Archer Queen going for a walk along the bottom left side of this base. Two layers of walls protect that town hall, so it might get a little bit tricky getting her into uh, the core early on. He's getting a little bit of funneling along the bottom corner with that Electro Dragon, zapping onto the town hall early and getting it activated. It means some more pain and punishment for this Archer Queen. She takes a few shots from the uh, town hall, but will move out to the left side of this base where the key strike is going to happen here. The piercing movement into the heart of this base through a jump spell right toward that enemy Archer Queen. He sends the Stone Slammer for this Town Hall, and the Pekkas and Bullers are now moving in. Drops another freeze, but actually covering the air defense this time so that the Stone Slammer doesn't take as many shots. He gets another Bullet Bounce in the air defense. It goes down perfectly right there so that the Stone Slammer can fly and not get popped too early. He still has the multis up. He hasn't taken any of those down. And out comes the balloons. No haste spell to push them around this base. Another balloon comes down. Can the queen and Pekka's get quite a bit of value? But look at this jump. It's not connecting the final section, meaning the Pekka's are going to beat through the wall. Still has a multi-target Inferno on the bottom section of this base to deal with. And as we've seen before, that can be a deadly end to the raid. Tries to find a bounce off this bowler, but he gets burnt up just after one single boulder. Archer Queen now without any healers to keep her safe, forced to use her Royal Cloak ability to try to stay up a bit longer, but there's no jump spell that can get her into the Inferno Tower compartment. And she survives with a sliver of health now to, to move behind these P.E.K.K.A.s. Make sure she doesn't run over a bomb or any splash damage at all, Carbon Fenner. She's toast. What a way that Queen dodged the Archer Tower because of the Air Skellies to bring her back up and around. Perfect timing, but he's got 35 seconds. There's a handful of P.E.K.K.A.s. He loses one, unfortunately, but now he has to get through a full health enemy king, and the Queen's going to actually help out of range of this multi-target Inferno but that multi-target Inferno is gonna cause so much damage. Took out the Queen, and now these Pekkas are gonna try to get through the storage, and then that multi, but there's just two layers of walls, and that Grand Warden's going down right now. You know if these Pekkas had another minute to fight, they'd be able to chop through those walls, but at max level, they've just got way too many hit points, and they're too slow at the going. Maybe if a Stone Slammer or a couple Balloons had made it through to that compartment, this could have been a three-star, but Tom, well known now for having a 95% hit his first time, a 91% hit his second time, is gonna have a 98 his third. In this replay, sending the Stone Slammer for the Town Hall and actually freezing that air defense was perfect, but he didn't have a haste spell for any balloons that came out of it to potentially move over to that multi-target Inferno. And those Teslas popped up at the end right there. And now we have Veil of Dark Looters, and he's gotten two three stars back to back. He's looking to go perfect to get another one. His first was with Massy Drags, his second was with Pekka Smash, and now his next is with an Electro and kind of a Sui Lalo. He has the clone spell. It was jokingly bragging early on that he's a one-star specialist, but you are right, Carbon Finn. He is the MVP so far today with two three-stars on the board looking for the hat trick to get the third. You can go online to buy tickets for the ESL1 Hamburg World Championship of the Clash of Clans World Finals that's going to be taking place in October. The million dollar prize pool this year will have its lion's share distributed at that live event. We hope to see you there. Now the queen is charging in, is gonna be responsible for this town hall. Uses the freeze over the enemy queen. Don't pop that, he already actually popped the king ability, but there's the clone spell, there's the rage. Perfect clone to actually clone those balloons up right over the queen, and the queen goes down, takes out this archer tower, pulls out the clan castle. This is looking really strong. The queen got so much value, and now he's staring the Lalo. The queen looks like just about to go down to the cannon and get that Grand Warden down. The Edrak should help with the actually clean up on the edge over there. He's gonna have to try to overwhelm and power through the rest of this base here. Veil vale did miss a baby dragon in the clan castle, though. That can deal quite a bit of damage to these balloons. 
It looks like the pups will have a field day at it, though, taking it down. And we see now the eternal tome ability from this Grand Warden protecting these balloons. Unfortunately for Veil, they're starting to clump up a little bit here, and they still have a multi-target Inferno to deal with on the back end. But have no fear, there's a heal spell to keep them nice and healthy. Another haste in tow to get them right back on target. Three Wizard Towers are firing away as fast as they can. Tornado Traps spinning those balloons around, but it looks like three stars is within reach. Applause from the Dark Looters as they claim another three-star hit. Vale is gonna get the hat trick, the first one ever to get three triples in a row right there. Unbelievable. Look at this with the balloons flying around with over a minute left in the raid. He goes perfect on the day three for three. What an attack from Vale. A historic story writing moment here for Vale. He has found his place in the history books with the only hat trick in the Clash of Clans World Championship qualifiers. He has got a great chance moving on to the playoffs tomorrow to keep it up. It was a beautiful attack, broke the base down perfectly. And look at that, all the planning led to that three star to help give Dark Looters another one to go two for two to kick off this war. Bradders can't help but smile, recognizing game, recognizes game, Carbon Finn. But Bradders has got another chance to keep Proc in it. The leader from the United Kingdom uh, is also a big football fan, so. Seeing that hat trick right in front of him might be inspirational for his own Archer Queen now. Moving down the right corner, it's going to be an Electro Dragon uh, balloon follow-up. Bradders previously also used an E-Drag hit in both of his last two attacks, so expect to see more of the same, getting similar results, a 97% and a 79% in his last two attacks. Very close to three stars. Bradders does love the E-Dragons, and he's sending them in here right now. They're popping the Grand Award in Eternal Tome. Out pops the Lava Hound. Baby Dragon went down super quick. Stone Slammer is leading the charge, freezes the Sweeper and that Eagle Artillery in the core, and his Queen went down, has a handful more of Rages and Freezes, as long as he pops these perfectly, maybe he can get some nice chain value through the core over this Eagle Artillery. It's all gonna come down to where the chain jumps, and he's got a ton of E-Drags in there with about two minutes left. He doesn't have the top side cleanup, but there's Tassels up there. He's gotta get some nice chain value through here. He's done a great job early on. These e drags still looking relatively healthy. Still has two multi-target Infernos to face down, though, and it seems like that Grand Warden is doing his best to keep these Electro Dragons up. Just too much firepower on the back end, these multi-target Infernos. I feel like every single time we're harping on these multi-Infernos as the single roadblock that many players are stumbling over. Uh, we've got a two-star once again now from Bratters, but just a few too many anti-air defenses on the back side of the space to get the third. Yeah, that's going to get picked off and finish off the raid. The Lightning grabs a final percent for 79. Brock really with great attacks in this war, but not enough to stop the Dark Looters that obviously want to prove that they're not second place in terms of the German lineups, but maybe even first with what they did here in their war. Dark Looters leading the charge at 30 right there. And you can see Group B, Dark Looters going two for two, getting so many triples, it's unbelievable. They're trying to get the number one overall spot, it looks like, to show how many triples in this matchup today. That's right, Carbon Finn. We've actually seen clans not even get 30 stars from all of their attacks. Dark Looters still have three more attacks left, including some from players who have previously scored three stars. Sir Iron got a three star hit in the first war and he's still uh, ready to go, but it's Knowledge's turn next. Knowledge is coming in with the Mass Hogs, 40 Hog Riders and two Skeleton Spells. He's got four heals as well with the Wall Wrecker. Pulls out the Clan Castle of a Dragon and some Archers and he wants to be able to take that down. Queen's going in. And following that wall record, there are the Valkyries. Thank goodness that he pulled them out, because if those Valkyries stayed inside that clan castle, that would be devastating for Hogs, since they can do splash and so fast to the Hogs as they're moving through the base. But the King still has his ability to help take out this Town Hall. Doesn't have to pop the Queen ability till later, and tries to move through the base. Pekka goes down, and the first stage of this attack is starting to round up. Knowledge is not relying on the Queen and King to get this base dusted off because uh, he didn't provide any healers to support, but instead is using the Hog Riders. They're going to move in up top and do soak a giant bomb, but the heal spell is nice and ready to catch back up. 
Eagle Artillery is pounding away at these hogs, but they're not gonna be going down that easily. Taking another big bomb hit on the left side of the map as the multi-target Inferno burns through them. They're hopping over the walls and getting to the next target as quickly as possible, but the Archer Queen's gonna start firing away at them. Three spell and skeletons on top should be able to take her out, Carbon Finn. The Hogs are in the Warden Eternal Tome, meaning that the Multis will not switch targets off the Hogs because it's stuck on them, and then the Queen goes down. Look at all those skellies in the court with the Hogs moving on the top side. Unfortunately, they did split. Has a lot of splash remaining and no more heal spells. There's the three Wizard Towers out multi and the Bomb Tower that can deal all splash damage to these units moving through. It looks like it's just gonna be a two-star at this point, but still a trying to rack up as much percentage. Knowledge is coming in. He ended up not getting a three-star, but he's trying to add up the higher percentage here. Hats off to Tom for a really, really well-constructed base holding off against the three stars from Dark Looters in their third hit here. We saw two Law Loon strikes to start things off before Knowledge switched out to the Hog Riders. Made it almost all the way to the end. We just have a few compartments at the very bottom of this base that were left standing. Uh, but even with that, the cleanup is looking like it ought to be able to get around 80% here. Uh, you think those archers have enough time to finish off that elixir storage there, Carbon Fin? If that wizard can get through that wall in time, then it can help take out that elixir storage. But that's the only unit that I see if they keep walking around. There's another storage that that wizard will have to get through a wall in order to try to take down. But looks like he's either going to finish just at the 78 or 79, hopefully. I think the hogs path through that area so there won't be any bombs they'll have to worry about. The wizard's gonna help take it down to help finish them right at a 79 right there for a two star for knowledge of Dark Looters, following up with two three stars, which is awesome for Dark Looters. They're just gonna keep racking on that triple count. 79% impressive follow up and it'll keep that lead strongly cemented on their side. Knowledge uh, has used Hog Riders now in his third attack. Let's take a quick look at the replay from earlier on when he finished off the Town Hall. He was able to charge in here and take out the Clan Castle, which had some Valkyries and that Dragon, and he was able to push through, and the Queen stepped up to take the Town Hall, but then, unfortunately, he had the Hog split through the rest of the base there. He wasn't able to overwhelm it. Next up is gonna be Yawn for the third and final time from Proc. In his previous attacks, Yon used Hog Riders to get an 80% two star, and then a Queen Charge P.E.K.K.A. Smash for the 72% two star. He's coming back with a five P.E.K.K.A. P.E.K.K.A. Smash. Oftentimes we only see four P.E.K.K.A.s being used uh, with this strategy, but might be able to get a little bit of early funneling done along the two o'clock position of this base uh, before moving in with the main strike force. He is setting up the funnel on the top side, pulls the Tesla, so the P.E.K.K.A. is gonna move all the way up there. Sends the next P.E.K.K.A. at the bottom side. He's going to try to loop everything into the Town Hall and then has two jumps leading through the floor. And he does have a actual Stone Slammer with potentially balloons in there. We're waiting to see what happens. Is going in. It's just waiting. It's one of those times where you guys have seen the rage just stall there. He's looking at it. He's reacting. And now the Baby Dragon and Lava Hound move over to this King. And the king is going to move to the bottom side of the storage. And the queen's going to get stuck on this lava hound to charge into the town hall. Big group of healers to support this ground base push. And Ice Golem explodes and drops that blizzard all across the right side of the map. We're going to get this town hall activated really soon, as soon as the uh, Barbarian King gets a few swings on it. And there it goes. Giga Tesla zapping down as many enemy troops as it possibly can. Explosion of the lava hound re re uh, reveals a lot of pups inside that are going to distract this queen on the back end. Nice timing there. And the Eternal Tone ability protects all the troops as they are soaking that Giga Bomb damage. Peck is now jumping in, but caught in a tornado trap. Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. We got an Archer Queen firing away at us. Dropping the freeze on the top side, Malty. But the Pekkas are in the core. They're going to not go for that Eagle, but they're going for the wall, leaving that Eagle artillery up. But now the Pekka switches to the Eagle, but it's too little, too late. His Queen is down. The Grand Warden is working on the cannon there, and he's just going to move his way. Can he take out the Eagle? And that Stone Slammer is following through. The Queen's actually on the bottom side. She finally goes down and still has that haste spell for potential balloons coming out of the Stone Slammer. There they are, and he's going to try to get as much cleanup as possible. But at this point, Proc is looking for a few more three stars to try to help get them closer to get to that number two seed. 
Grand Warden was not throwing away his shot. Finishes off the Eagle Artillery and gives a clear opportunity for some cleanup along the outer edges of this base. Yawn at 58% now and really needs to improve on this score to keep pace with the previous hits from his teammates. He's got a Goblin to help out on the bottom. It goes down to an Archer Tower. Looks like a minion and a few archers are going to have an easy time finishing off a few more unprotected buildings along the outside edge. Might be enough to get him close to 70% here. The wizard has the healers on him right there with the minions over on the left helping clean up. He has two more wizards. He's got to get them down to start cleaning up because last time he didn't drop the troops until the very last second, which he could have gotten maybe a little bit more percentage. Now he's dropping them just in time, but those mortar shots are firing on the wizards. He's passing just a 69 right there. The healers are actually keeping that wizard alive to get to 70, and down goes that wizard. Just with four seconds left, he's gonna finish up the raid with a 70% two-star there for Proc. Proc starting to lose connection here to Dark Looters, it seems. The gap is spreading for the Dark Looters, and Proc has to answer with three stars in the next two attacks. Take a look at the replay now. That big clump of troops moving in on the right side corner encountered a ton of resistance. The firepower pounding away at the P.E.K.K.A.s and bowlers as they move through this base. You really have to keep those P.E.K.K.A.s far out in front to protect the boulders from things like the multi-target Infernos without enough protection in the front and without the healers locked onto them. I think uh, 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 Jan wound up losing a little bit of his firepower earlier than he expected. Now we have Sir Iron coming in, and funny enough, he actually helped win the Town Hall 7 Cup, and he won some money there. Now he's trying to help try to win and qualify in here from Poland for the Town Hall 12, and he did get a 3-star with the Drag Bat in his very first attack, and now he's going to try to charge into this Town Hall with a P.E.K.K.A. Smash. Not just the Town Hall 7 competition, he also competed in Estonia at the Clan War League Season 3 Finals. So he's got a lot of competitive experience here. He's the base builder for the Dark Looter, so you have him to thank with all these uh, three stars not coming in against the Dark Looters, but rather going for them. He also works uh, at Siemens, and he says that his job here today at the World Qualifier is to prove his skill. If he manages to win and get a prize, he's going to take a trip with his brother go on a vacation. Maybe. Oh, that's awesome there, but he's going to focus on this war first in order to try to get there. That Dragon's Archers comes out, pops the Grand Warden Eternal Tome perfectly as everything is looping into the core of this base. The Dragon is about to go down to the Queen, so the Queen's not going to get stalled up. Easily works through that the poison. Now the Stone Slammer's coming on the cannon down south. If it opens up that wall, hopefully the bowlers move up to the top side and the Stone Slammer will move to the left. We're trying to see if it's going through. There it is. Bowlers now jump into the core. Some balloons on this air defense. Still has another rage in the core right there. Going to be able to reach over the wall and grab that multi. Out comes an electric dragon from the clan castle. Going to try to get as much value from this chain lightnings. This ground base attack is still going strong into the top left side of this base. A chance to encounter that third and final multi-target Inferno. Leaves the Archer Queen and the few remaining bowlers that are left with her. A clear opportunity uh, to move to the outside of the base now. They just don't have any way of hopping over these walls. Going to have to fire them down the old-fashioned way. Now, fortunately for Sir Iron, that boulder uh, bounce is enough to reach the cannon outside the space, so he'll be able to protect his troops a little bit out there. Electro Dragon's about to run into an air defense, which should deal uh, quick work with it. It's going to be uh, a ragtag bunch of bowlers, Archer Queen and Grand Warden, trying to make the final stab through the last layer of this base. He still does have that Grand War or the uh, Archer Queen ability and two wizards to help out uh, for the cleanup. It's going to be a tight one, Carbon. This is going to be super close. He wanted that E Dragon not to go to that storage. If it moved to that Wizard Tower, it would be one shot. So if he takes out this cannon, one shot his Archer Tower. This could be a three star. It's going to be really close. And it goes oh. down. The Queen and this Grand Warden is still up. The Queen oh. goes down. It's going to come down to this final oh. Grand Warden. Oh. Can he take it? There it is, and there is a three star for Sir Iron of Dark Looters. Wow, the three star by the skin of his teeth. But hey, it's not horseshoes or hand grenades. If you get all the way, you get all the rewards. 100% destruction for Sir Iron, and with just uh, as many troops as he possibly needed at the very end. I, I don't know if that Grand Warden could have taken another single shot at the end there, Carpet Fit. It was unbelievable. That's a third triple for 
stark looters there today in this war. And now Goblin is going to try to answer what he did before with the bat slap. He did get the only three star today for Proc. So he's looking to answer. He's coming in with mass E-Dragons. Goblin says uh, he spends some of his free time lifting weights, and he is definitely powering through in this competition today with a two-star 85% using a Laloon E-Drag setup, uh, similar to what he's got here in the first attack. He was the player to score three stars in the war against Nova, the only three-star hitter from Proc so far today, and we need to see a repeat performance here if they expect their score to hold up against Nova. Yeah, they're going to have to get a couple more threes or hope for some ones on the other side, which is never good. But unfortunately, this king pulls the Lava Hound out, which causes these E-Drags to go up and be distracted on it. And the heat and the air defense is just going to be firing down. And the core E-Drag goes down, so he can't reach that air defense anymore. But the Stone Slammer is flying from the top side. And that Lava Hound is causing so much trouble that he didn't expect. He wanted to keep that king far and away from that clan castle from pulling it. And now that Stone Slammer is moving from the bottom side because look at this. We have two ground expos on the back side. So that's one of the reasons why he had the mass e tracks But that air defense on the top is causing so many problems. This was a rapid fire attack, Carbon Finn. He dropped those Electro Dragons so quickly. It was hard to keep track of the action. He actually still has a, another Rage spell and a, a Free spell toward the end of this raid here now that he's just dropping to support the Stone Slammer. He came startlingly close to the three star, but with an errant air defense in the left corner pocket, uh, as well as another air defense toward the center and that multi-target Inferno. Uh, he had quite a bit of ways left to go before getting three stars. We'll be able uh, to get that two star and might find a final zap to get a few more percentage here. Can he strike the Tesla? Oh, just one. 79%. And with that, the Dark Looters reign supreme, nearly. Not yet, though. But look at look at these stats just. I mean, that's three, three, two, three. We don't have an answer to that. Where should Brock find that answer? It's unbelievable. Dark Looters are already at 35, and they still have one more attack. MCS of Group A finished the whole day at 35. So they're looking to get two more triples than that. That's unbelievable. Check out the replay real quick here as we get to see those Electro Dragons storming into the base again. Rage spells and Grand Warden ability used really early here to try to get them on target as fast as possible. They did a fantastic job taking down that enemy Archer Queen and Eagle Artillery, but just too many air defenses and not the spread he needed to finish them off. Now we have JoJo23 coming in for the final attack of Dark Looters. Can they get to a fort? Team Star War here. We'll take a look. He's coming in with the Sui Lalo, and he has the clone spell as well. And he's going to try to get his first triple here today. Jota was a man. He thought he was a loner, but he knew it wouldn't last. He's joined up now with the Dark Looters a three month in the past, and he's got a final opportunity to close things out here to give the Dark Looters the all time star lead in the Clash of Clans World Championship qualifiers. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about today. I'm talking about of all time, of all the qualifiers we've seen so far, with a chance at 38, Carbon Finn. Yes, that's unbelievable. We saw a 14-star war last month by INTZ. Are we going to see another one here from Dark Looters? He's going to be able to not only remove this multi, remove this air defense, but look at that. He opened up the corner wall to get access to the town hall. Such great value. If the queen goes in there, hopefully she doesn't. There she goes, and that's going to take the town hall down as well. He can start the Lalo because the queen still has her royal cloak, and there it is. He pops it pretty early, pulls some of the town hall. The town hall goes down. Now he can fly in and not have to worry about it. Queen gonna move back out again, let that Stone Slammer cover her entry here. She's got a few archers to take down, but the Poison Spell should help out here. We need to get her targeting onto that dragon sooner rather than later to make sure that these balloons and Electro Dragons coming out can make great use of that clone spell and take down these key center targets. We still have an Eagle Artillery up. I'm not sure uh, what JoJo's plan is to take that out, Carbon Finn. The Eagle is still going to be raining down, but that E-Drag got so much value. He took out the, not only the Queen, but that multi-target Inferno. Look at this. He's got a ton of balloons. This is a perfect pathing around the base. There's no more sweepers. Freezes the Eagle, freezes Whoa. the air defense, has the Grand Warden in Eternal Tome. Is this going to be another three-star 
from a Dark Looters. It Jojo like it. is looking to overwhelm this with one more freeze and two more. Haste plenty of cleanup has just under a minute left. What a beautiful attack right here. Jojo spends his free time drumming hard in a band and those fast hands are gonna be what delivers the three star for this fifth and final attack of the Dark Looters. A 14 star war overall and a record smashing 38 stars in this qualifier. What a beautiful job is such an overpowering attack that he swagged not only a free spell but he also swagged the haste right over the core on that clan castle letting them know how to get it done with a 95.8 average destruction the best one so far we've seen here today take a quick look at the replay and bask in the glory jojo 23 is a name you won't soon forget for one of the most dominating performances we've seen all day plenty of swag spells left to drop on this base as he go cruises in for the victory lap 14 stars, unbelievable. We have yet to see a 15, but that would be a perfect war to go five for five. To go four for five is still unbelievable. And now we have the final attack from Proc. I am Fem Fence Post coming in with a Queen Charge Hogs. He came in with a kind of a Kill Squad Lalo and a Sui Lalo in his previous attacks. So now this is gonna be his first ground attack today. Yeah, he's a Lava Loon Master just like Jojo, but going to the ground now, maybe he can find his talents expanding with the Hog Riders. Fence Post did say that Dragon is his favorite troop, so it's a shame we didn't get to see him play him here today, but nevertheless, maybe he'll find a new opening, a new favorite troop hidden somewhere in this wall record. That Grand Warden is being used on the outside with the healers to help set that funnel. Nice use of him, and he's gonna be used to follow these bowlers into the core. Pops that Grand Warden internal tome pretty early. Hopefully it wasn't too early, and they survived the Gigabomb. So very nice job there. The Tesla pulls a couple bowlers out there. Those healers hopefully come back to the core. He's getting some nice value inside here. He still has it. Pops that King ability. It's not going for that wall, that one King. Seems that he wants to go for the corner wall, but here come the Hog Riders from the top side and three heal spells to lead the charge. A gnarly jump spell gets these troops over three layers of walls and right to the core of the base. Eagle Artillery taking shots now from the Grand Warden and the Bowler and the Archer Queen. Hog Riders swooping in to the top left. Sound the horns, because they're on the attack, finishing off a multi-target Inferno. They're out of spells now. Oh, takes a spring trap and loses three hogs there. Can he finish off that last and third final multi-target Inferno in the bottom right, Carbon Finn? Unfortunately, he lost all of the hogs, and he wanted the healers to stay with this core push, and that one bowler stole the healers on the outside, unfortunately, because there was a tassel up there that pulled some of the bowlers and the healers decided not to follow into the core, which meant that the queen did not have the healers to get through all this. And unfortunately, he lost the hogs to the top side. To quote the bowler from uh, Clash Royale, bye bye. Unfortunately, Steals the healers and counterfeits the key uh, punch in the center of this base, but still at 74% in climbing. I am Vince Post is improving on his previous hits and has another opportunity. Uh, to put an attack in the books for Proc with a 31 total star count for this Group B performance. Yeah, he's going to fall short here, a 75% two star. He's got some bowlers in the core, but the Wizard's going to be beating on the wall. Only has 30 seconds left in the raid. But if we're taking a look at the top right of your screen, Group B, Dark Looters, finishes with a 38. And we are going to have the final war that's right after this to decide who is going to be the number two seed at 38. That's unbelievable because in Group A, the top score was MCES with 35. 94.3% total destruction and a hit rate that exceeds my wildest dreams. Eight total three stars for Dark Looters. Vince Post is going to clear out with 75%. We will need real firework here in the arena to be worthy 
of the performance that the Dark Looter showed us here against a proc doing just one two-star attack, rest three stars. Unbelievable things we witnessed here at the Clash of Clans World Championship July Qualifier. Not only did we see Ace 14 star war, but a veil of Dark Looters going three for three on the day. He's going perfect. And this was the final attack of the war here for Proc. Unfortunately, we're going to see the healers not follow the queen into the core. But, oh my goodness, Woody, the performance from Dark Looters was unbelievable. That's right, Carmen Finn. A couple bowlers wandered to the outside, and the healers were steadfast in their loyalty to their big blue brothers. The Archer Queen Grand Warden combination through the center of the base took down quite a few of those key defensive structures, but just not enough to keep them on target. Still, though, the Dark Looters are definitely the story from the end of this war with a 53% hit rate. Unbelievable. But now Renee is ready on the couch with the interview. Thanks, Carmen Finn. I'm over here with Boom Boom Boom. Gotta get that. Yeah! What a party you guys had on the stage there. I mean, it's incredible in terms of the stars. Talk us through the wall for you guys. How was that riding on that freestyle wave? Um, honestly, I didn't really expect that we get like so much triples because the defenses from the opponent were so strong. So I was su really surprised, but I'm really happy that we get like eight triples, I think. Uh, I'm really yeah, happy. I mean, you're sitting on 38 stars. Unfortunately, you can't take any of these stars with you in the playoffs, so that won't really help. But is there anything now that you will work on tonight to be ready for the playoffs tomorrow? Because you have been here before. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for you guys. What's missing now to make you be part of the World Championship later on in October? Um, that's right. I think um, we just need to keep our focus for tomorrow. Uh, we can't rely on our eight research stars uh, today, but tomorrow everything will be um, begin from to, from the start, so we will, we will keep the focus. Thanks, Boom, for the interview, and obviously Thank we'll you. get the fireworks ready. That's for sure after that performance. It's what do you got for us? Even though Vale got three out of three triples today, we have to take a look at the last attack, and that was from Yo-Yo. That was a crazy one, especially trying to break down the base and what is the main weakness in the space and uh, seeing this immediately pretty much and what the main weakness is is this area pretty much there's there's no point defense or there's no defense behind the town hall which could target the queen which means as soon as he's taking out those two defenses like the um, cannon and the archer tower there are no point defenses anymore which are protecting the Town Hall. The exports are too far behind, which means the Queen can pretty much do whatever she wants. He's using the Ice Goodwin to tank for his Queen. Meanwhile, the King even gets the Tessa farm, which is even more value for us both heroes. And then his Queen, like I said, as soon as this Inferno Tower is down, there's no damage anymore. The Queen can pretty much do whatever she wants and can hang out in the base, take out the, um, the air defense, the town hall later, and even a couple of sweepers, which are really important in those air attacks. After that, he's coming in with the test loon, just making sure that there are no black mines because he wants to drop the um, slammer later onto the sweeper over there. He's seeing, okay, there are archers coming out, which isn't like that uh, unusual, but the archers are not stopping, which means it's a dragon in there. He's dropping the poison spell. His queen is even coming over to help since there's no lava hound and it's really nice to have that as well. So everything together, taking out pretty much everything in the space and now you have to take a look at this electro dragon. I think the electro dragon might be one of the MVP troops in this one because take a look at it, he would, it will pretty much never die. He's chaining all of his attacks on those high HP buildings like the Expo over here. Meanwhile, he's coming with all of his Lava Hounds tanking those air defenses while his loons are like just flooding the be uh, backside of the space and then only the Inferno Tower is left, which means he doesn't even need to use all of his spells because the Warden ability is still up and ready to use. And with this, we're getting back into the last war and back to Renee. Thanks, Itsu. Definitely have to work on my dance moves if they keep going like that. What a surprise to see that many free stars, especially after yesterday. Let's have a quick look once again overall what happened throughout day two.
Yeah, we've seen that 14 star war right there from Dark Looters. That's the most unbelievable performance, and I can't wait for the next one. They really put an exclamation point at the end of the day here. Dark Looters with nine, or 38 stars and a 94.3 average destruction. Gotta hand it to them. They've actually solidified their spot, not just in the playoffs tomorrow, but in the first seed of the playoffs tomorrow. There's no way to catch up to them at this point. Once again, it's time for our last round, last ball, which also means that's to decide of who goes through to play off a Sunday. And for that, we're bringing back Blaze JP. Hi, team member Blaze JP. This the name is Mochi Kun, Emon Kun, Yu Kun, Oshiro Kun, Huan. カトビツ<笑> そう、They definitely are motivated, but it seems to be a tough, tough day for Blaze JP. Let's see what they can do here. For Blaze JP, we have Emikun, Mochikun, Wan, Oshigun, and Yurikun. And back with Nova, it's Koji, UZP, Wei, LMF, and L. Period. Basically, this war is all about Nova scoring the last stars they need to overtake Proc in our leaderboard to get this spot for playoff Sunday. But we know with Clash of Clans, Everything can happen, so they're definitely not sure. Here is our last war. It's Nova versus Blaze JP. This is the final war. Don't go anywhere. We, this is going to determine who's going to be joining the rest of the teams in the playoffs for tomorrow to have one closer shot to getting that golden ticket. Blaze JP and Nova have both made it here to the Clash of Clans World Championship qualifier two times before. So their third performance here and now will determine which one of them, if either, will move on to the playoffs. Now we have the first attack for Nova coming in with the kind of pack of smash, but this has got four earthquakes to open up 10 tiles. The queen is being used on the outside. There's the healers, but oh no, loses a healer. He did not drop the balloon right there to test for a seeking air mine. So that was actually perfectly placed to her right there as a defender. Now drop the Pekka at the bottom side, wants to set that funnel, but we have the town hall that is on the outside of this base, which is not too typical here, but it might actually help throw off the opponent. Ice Gold moving in now to give it a little bit of protection for this P.E.K.K.A. smash strategy. Also will freeze pretty soon here and give a nice blizzard effect, destroying uh, any chance of these defenses from being able to fire on them for a few seconds. That single target Inferno once again set up by Emil Kuhn in the center of the base trying to block out uh, a big heavy charge with a P.E.K.K.A. or a, a Queen into the base. We've seen uh, all these walls broken down now, and as the main force charges in, it's spreading out very nicely, Carbon Finn. He pushed his way right through that corp, but he ended up actually using that Grand Warden internal ability early when the bullets weren't even near it. But nonetheless, he got a ton charged through with the Stone Slammer coming on the top side. There's still that Tesla back there, still has a hay spell to help move the balloons that potentially come out of the Stone Slammer right there. And it's moving around. The Queen still has her Royal Cloak. And at this point, can he overwhelm the rest of this base? The healers are still on this queen. He might just be able to. Cold G has gotten great breaks. Every time he needs his troops to spread out and target multiple defenses, they've done it. Every time he needs them to focus fire down on one building, he's been able to keep them on target. At 70% overall damage now and still with another healthy queen, lots of balloons, and his healers in tow, there's only one more compartment and a couple of Teslas at the bottom of this base to worry about. The cleanup could be difficult, though, with less than a minute remaining for this attack. Yeah, Woody, you see that he doesn't have much cleanup on the top side. Just the archer over at nine on the left and some balloons just moving through. Pulls another seeking air mine, unfortunately. So one balloon does go down. The queen is going to try to help clean up. 
Well, he doesn't have any wizards up there to get through those storages to help get through pretty quickly. And this is going to be a higher percent two-star if he had unlimited time. Yes, he would be able to get it, but with only under 30 seconds, this one's going to be, uh, unfortunately, looks close, but there's so much HP on the top side. Seems like a heartbreaker from my perspective, Carbon Finn, but it's that crucial decision. Do I bring an extra balloon or do I bring an extra wizard to help out with the cleanup that can sometimes determine whether or not you get the three stars? Cold Key comfortably in the 90 percentage now at two stars, but without enough time to finish off the last buildings. 96% overall. Yeah, the 96 is still a great way to kick off the war right there. But he is now thinking, why didn't I bring some either wizards or some goblins to help on the top side for since those were storages and those were the resource collectors. But nonetheless, a 96% two star is still really good to kick this one off. Take another quick look at the replay here as he charges into the center of the base, gutting all the defenses with one swift strike. It's time now for Blaze JP to get back in action. Oshi Lukun is the first hitter for his team. He's coming in with his Pekka Smash, it looks like, and he's got two jumps. Drops the one balloon on the mortar, and then the queen gonna try to help keep the queen up top. You see he's dropping the healers far on the right side. The reason why he dropped them up on the right and not the left is because the healers would follow the queen up and then be put inside that multi-target inferno range. But if they're on the far right, they stay far away from that and they stay protected. Now he pulls the clan castle troops out. Here comes the archers. They keep coming. And then there's a dragon and then a poison can easily get through this no problem. So he doesn't have to worry. He does actually have three minions, which would help if there was a lava hound out there. But the queen is going to move up and around, gets a nice, beautiful bowler bounce on the air defense up top. And now he's going to charge in with the Pekka's bowlers and look out for this Grand Warden. Well, Shi Lukun is returning from the April qualifier. He's also a hunter in his spare time, so expect to see that eagle eye approach in his destruction of this base. He sends in the Pekkas with a jump spell toward the town hall. They get caught in the tornado trap real quick, but they're not taking too much damage. The enemy Archer Queen hasn't engaged them yet. Great timing on that Grand Warden. Eternal Tome ability will protect them from a giant bomb and that Giga Bomb going off in the town hall. They're taking out the enemy Archer Queen and are cruising through the alleyways in the backside of this base. He has got a great start to this raid, Carbon. Finn. He's got to push his way through. They're looking for a three star. They need a few, a handful of them. He's got the baby dragon up top. Should be able to take out the archer tower. The stone slammers flying down south with another freeze. Bowlers are moving through. That eagle's going to be firing, but that stone slammer is pretty close to full health there. So it should be able to get through these tassels. It should be able to get through the wizard tower. And then he has that freeze. This is looking really good for Blaze JP with over a minute left in the raid. Is this going to be a three star to kick it off for Blaze? It might be. Don't call it too soon. But with over a minute to get the cleanup done, it seems like he's got a great shot at it. The Stone Slammer pops and will release those balloons, going first for the uh, Wizard Tower and then the Eagle afterwards. Not quite a swag on the Haste and I, uh, Freeze spell, but pretty much. Uh, had another spell storage space, actually two spell storage space to finish things off here at 97% and a full 45 seconds. Oh, Shilu Kun has got the first three star for Blaze JP. What a star, Blaze JP coming back strong here. Obviously they picked up pace over the day and now a three star to go ahead in the lead against Nova. That was critical. We're taking a look at the replay. Pops that Grand Warden Eternal Tome perfectly over the Town Hall so the troops don't take any damage when they are in that ability. And then a beautiful use of the Stone Slammer on the bottom side to fly through there. Now we're going to have LMF coming in and he came in with two Queen Charge Lalos. His very first attack was a two-star 99%. So he's looking to try to fix and get his first triple of the day. And this time it's with the ground, the Pekka Smash. Back home in China, LMF is a private detective. So expect to see him use that clever eye to find a weakness in this base. He said his team is his family and that competing in esports is his dream. If you want to get a chance to see him on the Clash of Clans World Championship main stage at ESL1 Hamburg, you can go online now to buy your tickets. If he gets a prize there, he said he'd take a trip to Hawaii. Oh, that would be awesome, definitely. But he's focused here in this war to try to get the next triple for Nova. And this Grand Warden 
We've seen him before, but can he catch this multi-target Inferno? It doesn't even need to step over the walls. Look at that Grand Warden ra radius right there. And he's picking off so much value. Drops the Earthquakes up top, but he doesn't open up that wall for the Eagle. Is that going to actually be a big problem now that Warden is focused on this King? But now he's going to actually move to the storage. And then the Bowlers, Pekka's, are moving through. And they don't have to worry about that multi, so that's perfect. Still has that King ability, and everything's going to the Town Hall. Really clever use of this recently upgraded level 40 Grand Warden, getting a ton of shots of these defensive buildings trying to hide behind walls, not going to work out for Wong this time. LMF cruising through these top compartments and into the center of the base now, drops a perfectly placed Rage spell to get these P.E.K.K.A.s and Bowlers back on target. Two more multi-target Infernos as well as the inner uh, Eagle Artillery and Archer Queen on the back side of the space needs a lot of firepower to take them down. Nothing to target onto the enemy CC troops though. He drops a Poison spell to deal with the Lava Hound and Baby Dragon, but I'm not sure if that's going to be enough to finish them off, Garbage Pit. He's got the Stone Slammer moving on the top side, but the Queen stays up down south baby dragon is there but now the queen is going to have to get through this lava hound unfortunately balloons are flying from the top side getting picked off very quickly unfortunately he can't clear the top side and that eagle is now going to rain down on his queen still has ability with just under 50 seconds remaining has a wizard and some cleanup up top but at this point, the Queen burns her ability, and he's going to try to get as much percentage, drops the balloons on the mortar down south. Queen's going up and around, and he's passing just the 70% mark right there. He wants to try to get just a little bit more. Queen reaches around to find a few more buildings in there, but the healer that is left is not enough to keep her up. A little bit of cleanup now from these hog riders moving into the Tesla on the bottom side of the space and maybe get a chance from uh, this wizard or archer or minion combo to find another building, but it looks like 76% uh, is just gonna be all there is to this raid. LMF with the two star follow up. Yeah, finishing off with a 76 right there. Haven't got a three star yet in this final war of the day. We're taking a look at the replay with the Pactus Bowlers, everything moving in. It was such a smart play using the Grand Warden to remove that multi so the healers or anything walking by it wouldn't get hit. And that's such great value. And then popping the Grand Warden Eternal Tomb over here. Unfortunately, the Queen doesn't follow all the way into here and then gets stuck at the bottom side. Take a look now at Imun Kun, the second attacker from Blaze JP. You already heard he loves to eat ramen, but his favorite troop is actually Giants. We haven't seen many of those yet today. He's a co-leader in Blaze JP, the ranking officer here at the Clash of Clans World Championship July qualifier, trying to follow up that three-star performance from Imun Kun to give his clan a second life at qualifying for the playoffs. Coming in with a queen charge, hog attack, Dropping the Pekkas on the bottom side and the King to help create the funnel. King should be able to clear the enemy clean King up there as well. The bowler got some nice bowler bounces over on the left side. And then he's going to be able to drop the Queen, the healers, and then try to wall break and get to this Eagle Artillery and walk towards this court. Yes, she cannot reach that Town Hall if he's able to break in there, but he can drop the Hogs or even the Stone Slammer for it as he passes by. Healers keeping that Archer Queen nice and safe. A few wall breakers going to come in to try to crack open that compartment. They do manage to get the job done. She'll be able to go for the Eagle Artillery right afterwards. Still holding on to those 28 Hog Riders, but we got to remember, even though this first stage of the attack is crucially important, you can't spend too much time on it or you might find difficulty getting those Hog Riders on target at the end. They still have to worry about that Archer Queen on defense in the backside. There is no skeleton spell in this lineup to take care of her, so Amon Kun is relying on his Archer Queen to finish her off. The Queen is now moving to the left side, unfortunately, and the Tesla and those that Builder Hut is actually pulling her that way, meaning she won't go for the Eagle Artillery. He drops the Stone Slammer trying to target the Eagle, but they don't, unfortunately. Still has an Earthquake, should be able to activate the Town Hall as he passes. He activates it right there, drops the heal leading into it, still has the Grand Warden, sends some backup hogs to try to target the Eagle. Now they go for a beautiful Grand Warden Eternal Tome. Drops the Rage, leading over the core here. Has to freeze that Queen because his Queen didn't go to the core. But now the Eagle looks to go down. He needs to try to overwhelm it. Stone Slammer just about to go down. Drops some Hog Riders that it was carrying inside of it. 
Archer Queen on defense, though, is just getting massive value from LMF, firing away at as many Hog Riders as she can find. A ton are still within range, and that Rapid Fire Modified Expo is leaving no prisoners. Zapping down all but one of the remaining, uh, actually two defenses left, I guess the Tesla and the Archer Tower on top, but that Archer Queen has left her mark on this raid. If that queen went into the core and walked to the right side, he would have been able to take out the enemy queen, the eagle, and got so much value. That enemy queen just kept firing down on his hogs and picked them all off one at a time. Just has a few minions left to pick off this clan castle, finishing it up right around a 91%, and this queen should clear them out right there. So, Blaze JP getting the 91% two-star. Another very successful strike by Blaze JP, and now it's up to Nova to catch up to that once again. Two, two stars on that side, so no three star yet for Nova, but I'm absolutely sure they have that in them. We're taking a look at the group stage now where Proc sitting at 31 stars is within striking distance by Nova. They just need to follow up with two star hits for the rest of their raid, and they'll be able to overtake for the second playoff spot. They all want to get into the playoffs, but only the top two from each group make it. And remember, if you don't make the playoffs or you don't get that final spot, you still have next month to try to repeat as well and give it your all there. But now the next attack for Nova is going to be coming in. And I'm going to be curious to see what he's coming in with. It's going to be a queen charge Lalo. But look at that, the left side of your screen, 12 wall breakers. That's a lot of walls going down, Carbon Finn. Typically don't see that many, especially for a Lava Loon raid. The strategy this time, it seems, is going to be to use those wall breakers to help boost this Archer Queen. Does drop a, a tester wall breaker over on the top left compartment there just to see whether or not there's a spring trap or bomb uh, on the wall. Not seeing any, he drops another two to crash into that uh, first layer of wall. The queen is now walking around, not going to this town hall. Maybe going to send the king for the town hall if he sets the funnel properly. He still has to clear the top. He does. Now the king is going for it. Should be a very nice value. Going to send the wall breakers down south. He just needs a rage down there. Should be able to get through that, no problem. But also just needs two more wall breakers to do it as well, since it only takes three. The king is going to clear this town hall. They're getting through it just enough. There it is. Out comes all these archers and the dragon. The queen should be able to clear them, no problem, with a poison spell. There they go, slowly going down, getting picked off one at a time, drops a minion to help, and now he still has four more wall breakers. See where he's going to drop them. Actually manages to catch an air bomb using that minion, so doubles up on the value there. Got into a little bit of trouble as that barbarian king with the P.E.K.K.A. skin uh, encountered some skeletons and the CC troops and almost didn't have enough time to take the town hall down, but did manage to get it finished off. UZP said that he's very honored to be back here once again competing for a chance to make it to the world finals. He works in electronics manufacturing and said that his superpower is that he can eat as much as he wants without gaining any weight. If he wins a big prize at the world finals, he says he'll buy his girlfriend a gift. Aw, oh, so nice, but he's pushing his way in here, and he started the Lalo before the Queen kept going. Obviously, you don't want that Queen to go down, otherwise you might run out of time if you don't get the balloons moving through. That Grand Warden is actually picking off the Archer Tower, and he's not following the rest of these balloons through, going through the Ground Expo right there. Unfortunately, has no Grand Warden Eternal Tome. If he had that, through these triple multis at the bottom side, it could make a huge difference. Still has one more free spell. The baby dragon gets stuck on the king right there, but there's just so much splash remaining at the bottom side. Still got the two star, 75%. Gonna try to get into the 80s, but they're gonna fall short right here. All that multis and the expo, plus the archer tower and air defense will just too, too much to help take it down. A little bit of cleanup on the far side here. Drops a free spell in the interior of the base. Try to protect this Grand Warden a little bit longer and give him a chance to finish off that multi-target Inferno. He gets the job done, but the air defense is going to take out the minions anyways. Looks like 87%, maybe 88 if he gets the Siege Workshop on the bottom. And a few extra wall breakers, just for good measure. And there it is, wraps it up with the final seconds, the final shot. No, but it's still an 87% two-star. Still really good for Nova. Kicking it off right there. Next up, we're gonna have to see what the next plan is. But before that, we have the little bit of a replay with the wall breakers coming and getting that queen. 
and that King of taking out the Town Hall, pulling the Clan Castle, and there was just so many Expos on the Queen. She wasn't able to stay up through the whole backside of the base, but now Blaze JP needs the answer and needs to get a couple three stars on their own. Defense from Oshi Lukun holds up that time. No three star for UZP. Next up from Blaze JP, we have another of the Kuhn players. They're actually, they're all named Kuhn, except for the Spaniard on their team. They all have in, names that end in Kuhn. Yu Kuhn, the 24-year-old student from Japan, said that if he wins a prize, he'll bring it and give it to his family. That it's is a family man. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of that here. It's so nice to see here in Clash, definitely helping spreading the love around. And in this one, he's got a three healers, the P.E.K.K.A., and he's got a little bit of a push with the bowlers to get the value with the jump spell. And he's going to try to push his way through and get the enemy queen down that multi from the top side and then have the hogs for the rest of the base. Drops the healers to help out that Grand Warden. We've seen something similar to that before. I don't know if it calls, could, could call it a Warden Walk or a Warden Wander. He goes a bit slower, but he's got pretty nice range, and at level 40 can deal quite a bit of damage here. Taking a few shots from this cannon, but it seems like he can take a punch or two. Wall Wrecker to support this push along the top left side of the space and provide a little bit of funneling here for the Hog Riders, but starting off relatively slowly here for Yukun in the first minute of play. The king, the queen, the bowlers, everything is pushing in behind this wall wrecker. Out comes two balloons to test this, protect the healers. And you're going to see this Grand Warden and Eternal Tome over the jump. Is he going to pop it there? Still has that king ability. He pops the Grand Warden Eternal Tome before popping the king ability, which would protect all the barbarians that spawned. And now he's moving his way through. There is the lava pup that is now firing down. The queen's going to have to take her, down, take her time through each one to pick it off. And can she reach over the wall and grab this town hall? Just might be able to do it. Bowlers are getting a few shots off there. Archer Queen gets the lock and drops her Royal Cloak ability, taking down that town hall for the first star in this raid. First stage of this attack has been very successful, making sure to keep the uh, Expos off of the healers where possible. Yukun is going to keep his uh, Archer Queen firing away at this wall while the Hawk Riders are moving into the main stage of this attack. Already taking a few shots from some skeleton traps that he triggered. Unfortunately, the Queen goes down, has the balloons on the top side bomb tower. Hogs are moving through, gonna clear the core. Has the heal drop, but he looks to try to overwhelm this back section. Has one more heal. This is actually looking pretty good. Finds the tornado trap. There's the last heal spell, has the wizards down. He's gotta get something in the core for the cleanup there. It looks like a goblin's gonna make a huge difference with the archer tower, the Tessa on the top side. Can he get this? But there's 35 seconds remaining, pulling some giant bombs, loses all the healers. At this time, it's gonna be a matter of time, Woody. He's only got 30, less than 30 seconds. He needs a race against the clock. He'll take down this archer tower and refocus onto the skeletons next, but that's not what he needs to be focused on right now. Yu Kun has got a lot of buildings left to take down with only 17 seconds left to do it. These hog riders are swinging their hammers mighty fast, but I think that there are just too many structures remaining for Yu Kun to be able to get the three stars still. He He's been able to keep the percentage destruction for his side above 90%. An extremely impressive Hog Rider performance here, ending with a uh, two star 93. Nearly another three star for Blaze JP. They leaping ahead of Nova. And it seems like Blaze really wants to prove that even if they might not make it this qualifier, they're a team that everyone should have on their mind when it's about the World Championship. Absolutely. Keep Blaze JP in your mind when you're thinking about who is going to have a best chance of qualifying to come back. They've been here multiple times, so you know they can get it done. But the next attack is going to be coming in from LP of Nova. And he did start off his day with a three star with a queen charge hogs on the ground. And now he's switching it up, going to the air to see if he could get his next three star. And bringing a clone spell with him this time. Often see that used on the siege machine to help out whatever comes from that, usually an electro dragon or some balloons. He's also brought an earthquake spell. A single earthquake spell sometimes means that the player wants to use it directly on the town hall to trigger it early and make sure 
that uh, defense targeting troops will go for the Town Hall. A bit of a spread here from his heroes to start things off as the Barbarian King gets a few buildings on the top side and the uh, Archer Queen goes for top right. Stone Slammer, interestingly, is going to be going uh, directly on top of this Archer Queen. Pops, and there's uh, the clone spell on those balloons helping out uh, to take out the defenses in the top section of this base. Finishes off the Archer Queen, but really needs to go for that Eagle Artillery next. The e drag was able to take out the Queen and now activated the Town Hall by skipping onto it. He does have that uh, E, the, the Earthquake right there to help damage it. Pops the Warden ability, flies through here. Oh no, pulls the Tornado Trap. Lava Hound timed and dropped a little bit later. He's going to try to loop up and around this base. There is the Tesla Farm. Dropped a second Hound behind that first one. Hopefully he can pull some more traps. He does. And he has two more phrases. Unfortunately, doesn't have the Grand Warden Eternal Tome because he popped it over the Town Hall. But he has a handful of balloons, no heal spell. They are actually pathing to this Eagle Artillery. They get inside that small radius and they won't get hit. So he's gonna have to try to overwhelm this multi because the only thing that's remaining to hit these balloons is that multi air defense, the expo. Oh no, they're just pathing right around that multi. He has the baby dragon on the top side. But that multi's just wrecking the balloons. These lava pups are trying to chase down this one skeleton. I think they fired like 15 embers at it. Finally finish it off. Can this Inferno Tower hold off against the balloons? The life aura from the Grand Warden might be enough. We could be looking at a three star in the making here, Carbon Finn. He's looking at it. The balloons are flying. There's still the Grand Warden altar at the top side, which is going to fire at these balloons. Remember, this Grand Warden level 40 is super strong. There's a Seeking Air Mine. Can he do it? It's going to be Warden potentially versus Warden. But where is he going? Can he get it? A few balloons left with 37 seconds. LP of Nova is looking to get another three star right there. Takes out the Dark Storage and going to take out the Elixir Storage right there. Beautiful attack from LP of Nova. Applause from his teammates. He's proud to represent his clan, Nova Maldo, here on the big stage. Balloons are his favorite troop, and he made them work with lightning fast efficiency here, despite a scary Tesla trap at the end of the raid that seemed to take out a lot of balloons and a menacing Inferno Tower that burned up most of his army. He had just enough to finish things off and score the first three star in this war against Blaze JP, tying up the star total overall. That was beautiful. That was LP's second triple of the day. And now Blaze JP is going to try to answer and give it their all to get another three star on the board. They've already got one in this war. And we're going to have to see what they're coming in with. It's going to be a little bit of a Sui Lao has the Electron or the e track right there with a clone spell that Ice Golem is going to help lead the charge. And remember, when the Ice Golem does die, it's going to freeze the radius around anything in its area. And also, it will still freeze even if it gets sprung by a spring trap. Freezes up an Archer Tower, Cannon, and Wizard Tower here to give a little more coverage for our Archer Queen as she moves in. You don't see any Wall Breakers to help her out, so I'm not sure if she'll be able to get onto that uh, multi-target Inferno or not. She's going to cruise toward the top right side uh, of this base instead of going for the Inferno, but might have another idea in mind for taking that out. Pulls the CC out and grabs uh, a few archers on the backside here, as well as a Lava Hound, big, heavy, high hit point defender. Uh, but it might get counterfeited here. Only things uh, that are going to be firing back at it are the Electro Dragon. So he wants to keep that Electro Dragon away from the Lava Hound so it doesn't get distracted. He still has that final archer he can drop, but he's got one up at 12 o'clock, moving the Hound over there. The Stone Slammer and the E-Drag is flying into the core. There is the Clone Spell cloning up the balloons, E-Dragon as well, and that Queen is getting locked onto the balloons. Down goes the Eagle Artillery, and he throws that Expo, and now the E-Drag is going to be under the Rage, going to get some nice value. It takes out the Queen, takes out the Expo, and the Grand Warden Altar. Now he has a clear path to fly over this Town Hall, and it's now activated because of that E-Drag skipping onto it. Freezing the Town Hall has another three hastes and one free spell with the Grand Warden Eternal Tome.
Balloons are one of the slowest troops in the game, but not when they're hasted up. Great use of the spells there on the outside of the base to get them closer to the Town Hall. Uses that Grand War and Eternal Tome ability a bit early, and I think that he suffered quite a bit of damage from the Giga Bomb there. Still, he'll be continuing into the top side of this base. Lava Hound pops and gives some additional coverage. Those pups trying to protect these balloons from that last air defense in the top section, but I still am worried about this multi-target Inferno over on the right side of the base. Carbon Fin, is there enough time left to get that thing down? What a perfect free spell right there. The balloons are going to be able to move in and take out the multi. Take out the wizard tower and move over to the mortar. This warden is going to actually soak up some of the shots from the archer tower. It's slowly going through. Going to help. One is moving to the mortar. We can take a look at the top, the brackets. But is this going to be a three star from Blaze JP? Going to try to take out the archer tower. There it is. They're clapping. And the archer tower goes down. And there's just a few more buildings with only 25 seconds left. The balloons have to move around. Has a handful of minions. Woody, is he have a, does he have enough time? It's going to be so close. We did hear the applause from Blaze JP, so Mochi Kun's teammates definitely think that he's got this one in the bag, but I'm not SWAT quite so confident. Eight seconds left. Balloons make it on top of the gold storage. That's the last remaining structure. They get to drop the minion, and Lava Pups come in for the kill. Three star, 100%. Blaze JP immediately answering to the three star of Nova here. Both teams really want to end day two with a win on their side, and so far nothing is decided. That's two three stars here in this war for Blaze JP versus the one three star for Nova. So Blaze JP is trying their hardest to get that final playoff spot here today. And the Grand Warden here in that replay was able to help protect the balloons as he flew up and around. And now we have the final attack from Way of Nova, and he's looking to get another three star. He's already gotten one on the day versus Dark Looters with the Pekka Smash. Nova needs a three star just to tie up their score relative to where Blaze JP is sitting up right now. Remember, Way can mind control his Archer Queen. He says that if he gets a big prize, he'll use it toward getting a massive hot pot dinner to celebrate with his family and he might buy some gems at the same time. That would be awesome, getting those gems. But in this case, he's got to try to go with the Pekka Smash. The healers are down with the Queen, drops the Coco Loon to test for a Seeking Air Mine. Has a nice bowler skip right there, but it finds a Tessa, which picks it off. Sends another balloon to try to help take the Tesla down, but the Queen one-shots it under the Rage, no problem. Pulls the Lava Hound out, has five more balloons to help fly in, potentially with the Stone Slammer if he needs. But the balloons are coming over to the cannon. Hopefully if they could get the drop off and help take it down, but that Archer Tower is going to slowly pick them off. Finds the next Tesla. King's going to move down around, help clear the building on the outside, and he set that funnel very nicely. But unfortunately, the bullets are going to move to the cannon, but then they'll move inside the base. Reach up those troops there, engaging the Giga Tesla in the town hall. Uses that Grand Warden Eternal Tome ability to protect them from the Giga Bomb going off. The healers are a bit confused, spreading out now to try to protect different clumps of troops. Pekkas are taking a ton of fire really early on in this raid, and it looks like they're going down back to back. Overall damage is past the 50% mark, and Wei now has two stars in the books, but these Pekkas have just been hammered on so much early on. Oftentimes we see these Pekkas surviving toward the ends of the raid, Carbon Fin, but they have just been taking a beating here, and I think that it's going to be up to these last two heroes at the end to try to clean up what remains of this base. It's coming down to the Stone Slammer. The Queen still got her ability. The Queen, the balloon flying in from the right side. And we have some wizards and everything down south. The Queen has got the healers down there, so this is not looking too bad. And that Stone Slammer opened up quite a bit of the base if she's going to walk up and around here. The Pekka's going down with about a minute left. This is looking pretty good for Wei because he's already got that three star. He wants to get another one, and he's pushing his way through that multi, unfortunately. The Queen is walking around the top side, but still has her Royal Cloak ability. She does, holding on to it until the last possible moment. She's not going to be able to lock onto that multi-target Inferno. That has spelled doom for raids in the past, and it looks like she's going to use it right as she gets into that corner pocket up top. A big giant bomb destroys most of the archers that she summoned, but still uh, has 
great coverage here. The multi-target Inferno doing its best to burn up these attackers, but it looks like they're starting to break through the defenses. Grand Warden firing away, and that is it. Way has done it. A three-star follow-up from Nova. Another three-star for Wei. What an unbelievable performance getting that one in. This one was with the Packa Smash charging into the Town Hall and the King going all the way around. That Stone Slammer got so much value just flying through the edge of this base and let that Queen saving the Royal Cloak for the end and just getting that job done with the final attack coming in from Blaze. JP is going to be a Wan. Showing some love for the friends back at home. Juan has got the last opportunity now to seal the deal for Blaze JP. His side of the team has already been able to score two three-star hits, and with a 91% and a 93% strike, uh, on top of that, they've got a really solid shot at being able to win this war, even if he only gets a two-star here right now. Uh, looks like he needs to get at least 77% to exceed the overall destruction percentage that Nova has scored. Juan's coming in with the Queen Charge. Lalo has six wall breakers. Not dropping the healers. Now they're dropping the Queen. It looks like she's going to walk up to the top side and try to charge into this Eagle at the top. The Town Hall is on the outside towards the bottom. So it looks like it's going all out for the three. Drops the freeze on the multi. There are the wall breakers to come in to let the Queen charge into the core. Nice use of the wizards up there to help create the funnel and pulls the baby dragon witch out of the clan council. Drops the poison nice and early to help clear that so he doesn't have to worry. But the queen does actually go into the court, pull some more of the archers. King pops his ability. He's looking to get this three star. The archers are still inside that poison. He doesn't have any more wall breakers, but he does have a jump to jump in there. And there it is. The crucial final component to this early stage attack from Juan supporting this Archer Queen with a jump spell and a rage now trying to pop down this art air defense so it can't take out many more of his healers. She'll move into the core of this base, taking down that Eagle Artillery. Crucial target to finish off, especially when you're playing uh, an attack with so many balloons as what Juan has brought here. She moves in next to take out the enemy Archer Queen and she has done it. Check off those two boxes, but she's got a lot of work left to do. The Queen is still in the core under the rage with the healers. Means the Queen can almost reach everything in there. Starts a Lalo from the bottom side. Here comes the Grand Warden. If the Queen can clear all these multis, Grand Warden and Balloons take out this Town Hall. That looks like everything in this base will be covered. Drops the final Lava Hound. Grabs the Grand Warden ability, but he not didn't cover everything, unfortunately. And the Queen goes down in the core because the healers couldn't keep her alive because the healers got picked off. And he's moving to the top side here. Some of the air skelly picking off the balloons. The Lava Hound finally goes up, pops up there. He has some minions helping clean that, but there is one final multi-target in front of left up. They're gonna just spell so much damage to these balloons and he won't be able to fly through the rest of that. Blaze JP needed 13 stars from this last war to be competitive against Proc. And it looks like that's not gonna happen this time still. With this two star in the 90 percentage, Blaze JP has defeated Nova in this third and final war. Uh, but Nova will have more stars overall. Nova in a very curious position. They didn't win any of their wars today, but they're going to be moving on to the playoffs nonetheless. That's unbelievable with the two three stars here today and way actually getting three triples on the day. He goes three for three, just like Vale. What an unbelievable performance right there. Oh my goodness. And with that, we have a winner. It's Blaze JP. As you heard, not going through to the playoffs, but still showing a performance that is worth of a world championship team. Maybe next month they can show that again and then go through to playoffs Sunday. We've seen it and we've talked about it before. You don't need to win your wars. You just got to get the most three stars or the second most three stars to try to get to the playoffs and that's looking exactly what Nova did here and what an unbelievable performance. Take one last look at that final attack from Juan of Blaze. JP knew that he needed to get three stars on the board to be competitive in this race overall. Got so, so close with an impressive start to this attack. Rage and jump spells got the queen right on target, then followed up with a Grand Warden to protect these balloons, moving straight toward the town hall, knocked it down early on in its raid, Carbon Finn, but the follow-up was just a bit too light.
Yeah, unfortunately that queen goes down in the core and the healers got picked off. It was still a really great try by Juan, but it was unbelievable to see Nova coming in and Wei getting the three stars, all three in the wars today. It was awesome to see. It is a privilege to watch these wars between so many skilled players go down to the wire. The very last attack determining whether or not the teams will advance. Let's hear directly from an MVP fr uh, from our Blaze JP recent victors over at the couch. Thanks, Woody. And I decided to have a bigger party now here. After we have Boom, I now decide for way more people because the more people, the more fun. So we're starting with Yukun from Blaze JP. Obviously, you guys had an incredible last match there. But seeing your day and, and being aware that you had been last before going into that match, how hard was it to get that team focused again and then pro providing such a performance? あの、最後のゲームはすごかったんですけれども、あの、このゲームの前に、あの、チーは最後だと、ま、よく分かったんですけれども、これをこのような well, we, we knew we, we need to have like a perfect game, we need to get all those triples, so we just decided to do our stuff, go out and perform. I mean, two, two triples and nothing below 90%, that's definitely a great way of showing what you guys can do. There's only one qualifier left next month in August. Is that now where all your eyes will be focused on and you really will come back again and then do it? Because let's be honest, you're among the favorites to go to the World Championship, but you're missing the golden ticket so far. みんな行けると思うんですけれども、あの、来月も来ると思いますか。これつまりですか。え、来月がドイツへの最後のチャンスなので、え、もう一回来てドイツへのキップを掴みたいと思います。Well, it's the last chance next month and we definitely want to grab it, so we will be here and we will perform our best and we want to snatch this ticket. I'm absolutely sure that it will come back, but I really want to know now with the experience you have from the previous matches and the previous qualifiers that we did here, what is it that you need to slightly adjust to get that ticket? まあ、経験がいっぱいあるんですけれども、これを活かして、あの、まあ、進めるようにどうすればいいんですか、どう思いますか。あの、ドイツまで。え、もう一度みんなで配置の見直しや攻めの、え、確認を行って、え、8月予
He just used the slammer. What he's doing right now, using the, the queen to take off the enemy clan castle and creating a really nice funnel. Using the jump spell actually to get his troops inside the base while using the king on the outside to make sure all of the troops stay inside of the base. If you're asking yourself, why is he using the king on the outside, even though those barbarians like the king ability in combination with the warden ability, it's so strong. But in the Pekka Smash attacks, you want to have the, those healers on top of your Pekka because, well, the Pekka are getting healed way better by the healers, while the healers are having not are, are not that effective on those uh, heroes. So let's take a look at how he's using the last slammer. He's trying to use it as a supportive troop, trying to make sure that all of the wards are open, so uh, the troops uh, from his Pekka Smash can enter the rest of the base. And with this, he's getting the clutch triple to make sure that Nova is entering the playoffs. With this, we're getting back to Rene. Thanks, it's what a last match and what a storylines we created today throughout day two here in Group B. Having someone not winning a match, still making playoffs, that just shows how, how different it can be from day to day. I can't believe that you don't win a single war and you still end up making it in the playoffs. It's unbelievable. And we saw the other storyline was two people went perfect three for three. Look, the qualifier is a marathon, not a sprint. Nova might not have beaten any individual clan here, but they had one of the most impressive three-star hit rates of the qualifier so far. But of course, the main story has got to be the Dark Looters with 38 total stars. They had a hit rate above 50%. That means look at any attack, you're more than likely to see a three-star than not. I also have to, have to highlight Blade Shippy coming back on the last match and actually managed to get on the same start level as Proc did even with their previous matches. So that was incredible before we head into playoff Sunday, obviously because it's still Saturday, and showing you the playoffs that are coming up and the playoff bracket, we got another question for all players. And this time we asked them, what's the favorite Dark Elixir troop? Favorite Dark Elixir troop? Minions, good for cleanup. Baruki, this. Uh, I think it's the cochon. Hog your rider. Yezu, uh, Chishi. Nyu. Hog rider. My favorite Dark Elixir troop is the Lava Hound. I think it's looking pretty good for the Hawk Riders, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely also when we look at the attacks we had today. But we should look at the bracket and get you guys informed what you can expect tomorrow on Playoff Sunday. We're going to be seeing on the left side the number one seed, MCES, going to be facing off Nova, who finished the number two seed here today. On the other side of the bracket, the Dark Looters, the number one seed overall with 38 stars, face off against INTZ, competing yesterday they made into the second seed. Doesn't look like wars for tomorrow, does more look like apocalypse coming our way on a Sunday. And remember that the Clash of Clans World Championship accumulates in a stadium on a huge stage at ESL1 in October in Hamburg, Germany. If you want to get tickets for that, just follow the link in our description for the broadcast, buy them and then see Clash of Clans on the highest level and the best atmosphere and definitely on the coolest stage. <sighs> also the coolest castles. Thanks once again, guys, for being here. Thank you so much, Renee. It was great to be here for day two. We saw history in the making, and I can't wait to see what's going to be happening in the playoffs and who is going to get that golden ticket. Thanks very much for tuning in, everyone. My name's Woody, and it's been a pleasure casting alongside you, Carbon Finn. I hope that if you guys enjoyed the matches today, you'll be back again tomorrow for the playoffs, where the culmination of all this clashing is going to bring the biggest bases and the heaviest attacks back to the big screen. Remember to follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, anywhere you're watching the action here, so you can catch more clashing soon. Definitely make sure big social media has some amazing content for you guys and additional videos for this. But day two is done and over. I want to say thanks for watching. That's for sure. Tomorrow, playoff Sunday, 4 p.m. CST once again. Until then, cool down a bit. And then tomorrow, we fire it up again. My name is Renee, and I see you guys there.